It's time for Dixie State University Athletics on Radio Dixie 91.3 KXDS Santa Clara. DSU Athletics on Radio Dixie 91.3 is brought to you by Ken Garf St. George Ford Lincoln, your neighborhood Ford dealer. We hear you. And now it's time for DSU Athletics. Welcome to Radio Dixie 91.3. As today, we'll have the Ore Diggers of Colorado Mines versus the Trailblazers of Dixie State in a great matchup today on Senior Day and Homecoming Day here at Trailblazer Stadium. I am going to be your host today, your play-by-play guy. Everybody today, pre-game, post-game, halftime, I'm Martin Kelly. Today, I welcome you guys to Radio Dixie 91.3 for the final home game of the season for the Dixie State Trailblazers here at Trailblazer Stadium. Today, it is a good crowd today so far as everybody starts to pile into the stadium. They will have homecoming ceremonies just in a few minutes and senior day ceremonies for all 18 seniors that have been playing for Dixie State over the last few years. Congratulations to all those guys. But let's get back to the sports matchup today. We have a, some would say a one-sided event type matchup today, but as a Dixie State fan and as a Dixie State play-by-play guy that does mostly the road games, but today I'm doing a home game for Radio Dixie. I have to tend to disagree just because I am a little biased because I am a Dixie State fan. But we have the Colorado School of Mines coming into this game 9 0 overall, 8 0 in RMAC, uh, excuse me, 9 8 0 in RMAC play there first in the conference. Last game for Colorado School of Mines was a win for them. They won this game 84 to 24 over South Dakota Mines, a team that Dixie State beat earlier in the year in a complete awesome fashion. That game was their numbers on the day were staggering on the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, they were down, but offensively, they had 43 rushes, 259 yards, and six touchdowns. That was just in the run. And then on the pass, they had 21 catches, 395 yards, and five touchdowns. Defensive numbers for the team, they had 74 tackles, two sacks, one fumble, and two interceptions. Now, this is the sixth best team in Division II play. Obviously, Dixie State has played a couple good Division II teams this year. We lost to Colorado State Play with the first game of the season. They're 8-1 right now. They need Colorado School Mines to lose this game to give them a chance for Playboy to be one of the top seeds in the uh, in the automatic play to go into the conference championship. That might not happen, but we also played Grand Valley State earlier this year. And that wasn't a complete blowout, not like the fashion play ball, uh put on us where we lost that game 56-14. to 14. Um, We lost to Grand Valley State 35-14, to 14, which was a little bit an easier score, only losing by 21. Dixie State was really in that game a lot uh, defensively. They were trying to keep Grand Valley State off their game the whole time, just offensively could not get anything going on in the first half. It didn't come until the second half. By then, it was just too late. When it came to playing Pueblo, Nothing went right that day. We had blocked kicks. We had blocked punts. Quarterbacks were getting injured, getting flipping back and forth into the starting rotation. Running backs were out for the game. Wide receivers were out for the game. Defensively, there was no point in that game where defense looked good. So when, it, when, when we look at the two matchups that we had, teams that were ranked in Division two play, not so great. Obviously, 0-2 in those games. But who knows? Maybe this game can change. Maybe we can spark something. Hopefully, we can do that coming up. On uh, Dixie State side, they are 5-4 and four overall, 5-3. and three, They're fourth in the RMAC play right now. Obviously, most fans will be skeptical now. Obviously, they're out of the RMAC championship consideration. They're not sitting in the middle of the pack, which most people thought they would get there, but they, wouldn't, they didn't think they would get there this late in the season. Obviously, maybe we thought we were going to struggle at the beginning of the season and we're just going to ride that out for the season. That didn't happen. We were 4-1. and one. Through the first five games of the season, we were on a winning streak. First time in Dixie State history, we won four games straight in Division II era. And then the roof started to collapse. We lost to Grand Valley State. We came home. We won against Western. That wasn't in a complete total fashion. We all thought that was a 17-10 to 10 win. We go on the road, Shadron State. We played fairly well. Defensively, we really weren't playing stellar, but we were playing okay. Offensively, it was a great day. Mike Sanders having one of his best games of the season. We lose that game off a late play, 30 to 18, and then we go to Colorado Mesa last week. That was a dog fight for the for about the first quarter, and then again the 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 roof just collapsed in that game. We lost that game, 45 to 24. So losing three out of your four last games is not the way you want to go into your homecoming game. 
especially against a really good team like Colorado Mines. That's just not the way you want to do it. But that's what we're at saying right now. Obviously, there's one last game. That game is on the road against Adam State. We'll handle Adam State when we get to Adam State. But for now, Colorado School Mines is on the schedule. We're going to take our first time out here in the Trailblazer Stadium. We'll be right back after these short, me- after these short messages on the Trailblazer Network. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to Radio Dixie 91.3. I am going to be your play-by-play guy and color commentator today, Martin Kelly. Here I am on today's day. We're at Trailblazer Stadium again for the homecoming game and senior day here at Dixie State. They're now getting the ceremonies underway for those seniors. Again, we have 18 seniors uh, today. They're being... uh, Ceremony, uh, they're part of the ceremony. Congratulations to all those guys. What a great, great career they have had here at Dixie State. Let's get to a couple players to watch in this game. And obviously, no surprise that it is quarterbacks in this matchup. Now, for Colorado School Mines, Isaiah Harker is one of the best quarterbacks in Division II play this year. Obviously, leading Colorado Mines to an undefeated streak so far, an undefeated season. And they expect to go further with that. He is 208 of 303 yards. That's a 68% completion percentage. He has 2,874 yards through the air, 34 touchdowns, four interceptions. A pretty good year. He's up for being the Division II Player of the Year and in consideration for being the RMAC Player of the Year. Obviously, a lot of people are thinking he's going to get that. I wouldn't be surprised if he did not. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he did get that. Why am I saying did not? Uh, for Dixie State, Mike Sanders obviously not been around the whole season. It was Trent Darms and Easton Smith for earlier part of the season, but Mike Sanders has worked his way back into the starting quarterback position. Obviously, he started doing it when he was in Black Hill State. He was playing. He he played a couple minutes there. Then it was worked in the Grand Valley State, and so on from there. So forth. He's ninety two of one fifty five with a sixty sixty percent completion percentage for one thousand two hundred forty nine yards. Three touchdowns, three interceptions. Obviously, we, were, we we knew what type of arm he had coming into uh, into fall camp this season. Injuries have had have stalled him a little bit on his process of being the quarterback we thought he was going to be this season. So he's not playing perfectly. But obviously, the last couple games, no sacks, over 900 yards. Um, excuse me, over 882 yards in the air for three touchdowns, for three interceptions. Got to clean up the interceptions. A couple of mistakes there. Obviously, some mistakes he could have avoided, avoided, but still, if he cleans up those mistakes, this is going to be a gunslinging matchup. I promise you that. Armac games that are going on that will be going on today during the game, and obviously there's one game later tonight, Western Colorado versus New Mexico Highlands. That game is going to be at 1 o'clock. Colorado State Playbook looks to finish at home. They're going to be playing Black Hill State at 1 o'clock. Shadron State is on the road at South Dakota Mines. That game will also be at 1 o'clock. And then Colorado Mesa and Adams State, that game is at 7 o'clock tonight. Let's get to a little couple predictions, then I'll get starting lineups, and then we're going to get going here. But my predictions, obviously, I'm going to be a little biased here. I'm going to stick with Dixie State here. Obviously, I should stick with Dixie State. I call some of the games. I think this is going to be a really close one, but a shootout. I got Dixie State winning this game 45-42. Dishing out Colorado School Mines' first loss of the season. Colorado School Mines versus Colorado State Plow for the RMAC Championship. That game is going to be good, but I think Mines is going to go into that game with one loss. That's my prediction there. Coming up, we're going to take one more break here. I'm going to get starting lineups. We're going to get the coin toss and the national anthem here on Radio Dixie 91.3, the Trailblazer Network. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to Radio Dixie 91.3, the Trailblazer Network for you this season on the football side. And for the rest of Dixie Sports this season, we're going to try to get out as many Dixie Sports as we can to all you fans in, out here in St. George and beyond the Utah borders. But let's get to some starting lineups here for Dixie State. Mike Sanders will be a starting quarterback. CJ Luongo and Lawrence Starks will be the two running backs in the backfield. They've had a pretty good season back there. Casey Allison, this will be his fourth game of the season after having a couple hamstring injuries and a hand injury earlier in the year. Dewan Dantzler and Xavier Smith, the two, the two guys that have been so consistent this season at the wide receiver positions, even though they've had three different quarterbacks this season. Cody Hobbs works his way back into the starting lineup after a few injuries this past year has yielded him 
at the tight end position. Tavea Tualuda, one of the seniors on this team, is going to be starting at left tackle. Nathan Avicies will be the left guard. Dylan Hall will be the center. Tamia Matalitua will be the right guard. And Brandon Turner will be the right tackle. To the defensive line and defense, Anthony Yarrow, the freshman that's been taken off this season, will be starting on the D-line with them. Also, Sebastian Martini, Remington Kelly, the two seniors on this defensive team. Congratulations to both of them and their career. Wes Moyahi will help them out in the middle of that. Shiloh Pritchard, Alex Lilliard, Abraham Reinhardt. Obviously, Shiloh, also another senior on this defensive team. Congratulations to him. Mike Jones, Darren Jones, Trayvon Watson, and Jalen Moore finish out the DB and free safety and safe and strong safety positions on this Dixie State defense. Two to Colorado Mines starting lineups. Isaiah Harker will be their starting quarterback. Brandon Mayberry and Brandon Farmer will be their two running backs. Sean O'Dell, Brody Oliver, and Riley Hoff will be their two receivers on their starting lineups. Zach Peterson will be their starting tight end. Nate Main will be their left guard. Paxton Heating will be their left. Excuse me. Le- Nate Main will be their left tackle. Paxton Heating will be their left guard. Grant Stewart is their center. Ryan Buck is their right guard, and even, uh, excuse me, Evan Gill will be their right tackle. On the D line side, Cameron Reller will be their one of their guys in the middle, followed by Sean Barry, Jack McAdams, and Scott Adams will be there on their defensive line. McGee McMullen will be their one of their outside linebackers. Logan Bach will be their middle linebacker. Josh Adams is their other outside linebacker. Edwin Lovett, Mason Pierce, Kobe Brewster, and Carbon Corgill will finish out, will finish out their two starting corners and free safety and strong positions on this defense. These two defenses, obviously there's a lot of difference between these two teams. Colorado School Mines just a little bit better, only giving up just about 21 points per game to their opponents, while Dixie State is giving up 24 so a little bit difference in numbers there, but what what Dixie State lacks on the defensive side, they try to make up on the offensive side, but again, that's the offense. So a, a good matchup today we're going to have for you guys here on Radio Dixie. Obviously, not the perfect matchup we all thought it was going to be, not the perfect uh, end to the season we all thought. Obviously, a 4-1 start for Dixie State. We all thought they would ride that to the end of the season, and that hasn't gone the way as the roof has been starting to collapse. Whether it has completely collapsed or not, we have not seen yet. So hopefully it has not. So we're gonna be we're gonna take one more time out here. We're gonna have the coin toss and the national anthem for you guys here on Radio Dixie ninety one point three. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to Trailblazer Stadium here. I am your host. I am going to be your play-by-play, your color commentator today here on Radio Dixie 91.3. Hey, we have a fabulous matchup. If you're just joining us, joining us here, we have the Ore Diggers of Colorado School Mines versus the Trailblazers of Dixie State. Obviously, it is homecoming day and senior day here at Radio, here at Trailblazer Stadium for these two football teams. Congratulations to the 18 seniors on this football team. Obviously, we have a lot of them all over the place on the starting lineups today, but it will be a good matchup today between both teams. I hopefully, I think it is. So we will get to that. The coin toss has been made. And I believe Dixie State will be kicking it off. Colorado School Mines will receive. They will kick it off later in the second half to Dixie State. Again, if you're just joining us here on Radio Dixie 91.3, good matchup we have today. Dixie State, Colorado School Mines. Colorado School Mines comes into this game undefeated. They're 9 0 overall, 8 0 in RMAC play. Dixie State comes into this game 5 4, 5 3 overall in RMAC play. Not the start, not, not the end of the season we all thought, but we'll take it as we can get it. Obviously, we hope we finish on a great point. Winning these last two games will give us a winning record for the second year straight in Division II play. That is always good when you're a head football coach, and especially for programs that are trying to get, trying to, trying to compete. They're trying to compete with these big boy teams, and if you can get a couple back-to-back wins, winning seasons, that helps a lot. It really does. Some numbers on these teams, as I said before, Colorado School Mine scores 50 points per game, only giving up 21 to their opponents. Dixie State this season, they're scoring 26 points and giving up 24 to their opponents. Rushing numbers are completely different. 
Mines has 2,142 yards on the ground with about 210 in a game. And Dixie State runs the ball for about 12, uh, 1,239 yards for about, for about 137 yards per game. Next in Division II, he's throwing the ball for crazy numbers, 34 touchdowns and four interceptions. Mike Sanders will be the quarterback today. He has three touchdowns, three interceptions for 1,249 yards. These guys can fling it around the field. Hopefully, we'll see which one has the better arm today. And a gunslinging matchup, I believe, will be happening today as A.J. Yergsen lines up to kick the football as we speak to Colorado School Mines. They will receive the football. Colorado School Mines will kick it off to Dixie State at the start of this second half here at Trailblazer Stadium. I just love saying that, Trailblazer Stadium. A.J., make sure that everybody's ready. Lines up to get the kickoff, and it is a booming kick down the field. It will be received at the 10-yard line. It will be brought out at about what looks to be about the 35-yard line. That's where Colorado School Mines will start their first drive of the day as Dixie State brings out their defense. Again, Isaiah Harker will be their starting quarterback today as Brandon Mayberry, Brandon Farmer will be his two running backs, Sean O'Dell, Brody Oliver, and Riley Hoff will be his starting wide receivers, and Zach Peterson will be his starting tight end. It's Colorado School Mines, and Harker lines up in a shotgun. He has three receivers and a bunch set to his right. Has one receiver out to his left, hands the ball to Brandon Mayberry. He'll get up the middle of the field, and it looks like he'll chug himself for about 10 yards there as he'll get the first down. First down and 10, coming up for Colorado School Mines. Good little run there by Colorado School Mines and Brandon Mayberry to start the game off as Colorado School Mines goes in a no huddle. Isaiah has two receivers to his right and left. Just Brandon trucked himself right through the middle of that defense to get that first down. Harker will take the snap, doesn't fake it, throws it, and it will be caught by his receiver, pushed out of bounds late. I believe that's Riley Hoff. He'll get a gain about eight yards on that play. A little out route there by the receiver there in the slot position to get eight yards to make a second down and two. Obviously, Mines going with a no huddle, trying to get Dixie State off their play today as Dixie State is in all red today in their uniforms. Mines is in white and blue. Second down and two, Kona for Colorado Mines here on their first drive. 14 minutes left to go in this first quarter here. Second down and two, Harker takes a snap and will just get about a yard on that one as he was looking for his intended target there. Did not get the reception there. Third down and one coming up. Excuse me, third down and two. Harker will have two. One receiver to his right, three receivers to his left in a trip set. Brandon from far, Brandon, excuse me, Brandon Mayberry is still in the backfield with him. Harker looks to the line. Dixie State bringing the blitz. Motions over Mayberry. Throws it and it is caught by his tight end, Zach Zach Randolph, he'll get the first down. First down and 10 coming up for Colorado School of Mines. A little quick slant there out of the tight end position. Harker did not think twice, threw it to him, and he got the intercept. He got the reception, excuse me, as I try to slow down here and not try to get on a fast-paced speed with my speech. First down and 10 coming up for Colorado School of Mines. Harker has two receivers to his left and right. Walks up to the line, changes the play. Mayberry still in the backfield with him. Dixie State showing the blitz. They'll back off and go back into coverage. Hands the ball to Mayberry. He'll try to get up the middle and nothing there. He'll be backed up about five yards. Minus five yards. That'll be his second run of the day by Mayberry. It'll be second down and 15 coming up as Dixie State gets a huge stop there. Wes Moyahi and Remington Kelly were the first two to get there. As we look at the replay here, just a great stop there. Again, Remington Kelly and Wes Moyahi breaking up the middle right by the right guard and tackle and breaking up that play. First down and 10, Harker will take the snap. Three sets to his right and one set to his left. He'll take the snap and throws it, and it was caught by his receiver, David Somers, out there in the out there on his own island, and will get the uh, will get excuse me six yards on that gain. Second, excuse me, third down. And six coming up, a huge third down here for Dixie State. Try to get off the field early as Harker has three receivers to his right and one receiver to his left. Harker looking downfield, throws it, and it is caught by his receiver. He'll get away from the defense, 
he'll get down to about the 26 yard line. Good reception there again. That was Riley Hoff on the catch, just sitting in the slot position, coming out of the trip set. Was right there, got away from the defense, and got a gain of five yards after the catch. As we first down and 10 coming up. First down and 10. Harker looks to throw it. He'll throw it deep down the field. And it is caught. Excuse me. No, it was a run. I got myself confused as turn as Mayberry went out to the edge and got down to about the nine yard line there. I confused myself. I thought it was a pass, but Mayberry gained down to about the six yard line there as it'll be first down and goal. First down and goal. Harker lines him up again fast in a fast no huddle pace. Hands the ball to Mayberry again. He'll get up the middle and will get the touchdown. Six to nothing. Colorado School Mines leads this game early. Not the way Dixie State wanted to start on the defensive side of the ball. Everything went right for Colorado School Mines on that drive. Nothing went wrong as Mayberry will get the first touchdown of the day for Colorado School Mines. They will take a seven-point lead coming out of this break. We're going to take a quick break here on Radio Dixie 91.3 and be right back with more on the Trailblazer Network here on Radio Dixie 91.3. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to Radio Dixie 91.3 as we are at Trailblazer Stadium today for homecoming day and senior day here at uh, Dixie State University. Obviously, again, we have 18 seniors on today's team that have were, cer- were given a ceremony before the game started. Congratulations to all those 18 seniors. Last drive by Colorado School Mines lasted six plays, 65, excuse me, 55 yards in about three minutes. A fast, quick pace offense that got off that got to a great start and did not stop at all. As Dixie State and Colorado School Mines will line up for the kickoff here. Colorado School Mines will kick it back off to Dixie State, and Dixie State covers it at about the 15-yard line by A.J. Simpson. A.J. Simpson's got out to about the 40, to the 50, to the 40, to the 30, to the 20. Can he beat the rest of the defense? Yes! He will score a touchdown! Dixie State responds quickly there. A.J. Simpson with the 65-yard touchdown return on the kickoff. Make it 7-6. Dixie State trails Colorado School Mines. What a great way to start off after Colorado School Mines gets a touchdown to lead the game. Dixie State comes back with a kickoff return all the way back to the house and answers back to Colorado School Mines as they trail this game 7-6 with a pending PAT coming. An amazing play there by Simpson on the kickoff return. As I said, a 65-yarder, it was actually an 85-yarder, so I missed 20 yards there as the PAT is up, and it is good. We have a tied ball game here early, ladies and gentlemen. It is 7-7, Dixie State, Colorado School Mines, tied up. Wow, what a great play there by A.J. Simpson on the return. We're going to stay here live. I did not see that coming out of the break. I thought Dixie State would be a little conservative, just try to bring their offense out. But no, they went gunslinging there. They responded very quickly. That is something you want to see out of a Dixie State team, especially being a huge underdog coming into this game against Colorado School Mines, who everybody thinks are just going to slide past this team and their next opponent and go to the conference championship. Be ready for Colorado State Pueblo. No, we got other plans for you guys today. Dixie State is not having it today. It is homecoming day and senior day here at Dixie State University. We are not taking it today. Today is not the day for Colorado School Mines to walk all over us today. That is not going to happen. Great start there by Dixie State. As Dixie State lines up to kick it back off to Colorado School Mines, it is a booming kick down the field. It'll be returned at about the five yard line. He stumbles. And he'll be down at about the 10-yard line. Not a great turnout by that one. By 43, Brandon Farmer, the redshirt senior on this team, did not have a good return there. And it will back them up to about the 10-yard line. 
fumbled the football. He botched the football, then tried to pick it up, fumbled on his feet, and just landed on it. What a I, – I keep emphasizing it, but what a great start there by Dixie State. Isaiah Harker brings out the offense yet again. He has two receivers to his right and left. Harker will hand it off to Mayberry. He'll just get about two yards on that carry. Mayberry's third recept, third carry of the day. They will go back into a no huddle. Again, they'll line up with two receivers to his left. Mayberry is in the backfield. One receiver to his right, the tight end on the line. Harker looking across the defense. Dixie State showing to bring the blitz. Harker changing it on the line. Takes a snap. He's looking downfield. Looking, looking, looking. Throws it deep down the field. And it is just out of reach. He was trying to connect with Brody Oliver, his leading wide receiver on this team, for a deep streak route down the middle of the field and just could not connect with him. He was about five yards ahead of him on, on, on that throw. It'll be third down and eight coming up for this team. For Colorado School Mines, excuse me. Obviously, Dixie State coming into this game being the huge underdogs they are. Not too shabby of a start as Harker lines up in the backfield. Yet again, Mayberry back there. Harker has three receivers to his right and one receiver to his left. Dixie State showing cover three. Harker throws it, and it is incomplete. It'll be fourth down as Dixie State gets a huge stop there on that drive. It'll force Colorado School Mines to take their offense off the field. Great stop there by Dixie State, especially coming out of the touchdown return there on the kickoff. You force Colorado School Mines to be a little uncomfortable with that one, and you play them perfectly. This is what Dixie State needs to do. Awesome job there. As they'll be lined up for the punt here, Colorado School Mines looking for a good coverage here. Dixie State shows the blitz. It does not come, but the kick gets away. Xavier Smith back there on about the 43-yard line, and he'll just flag it down, and that's where Dixie State will bring out their offense to start this game. Again, Mike Sanders is a quarterback today. He has played in the last five games for Dixie State as a starting quarterback after playing a little bit in Black Hill State where he helped win that game late, giving it to Connor Smith on the last play of the game for a touchdown. What is Mike Sanders going to do out of the break here to get this Dixie State offense the lead in this game? Lines up with CJ Longo in the backfield. Two receivers to his left and one receiver to his right. Yoshikawa on the line. Sanders hands the ball to CJ. No, fakes it. Looking down deep field. Throws it late, and it was caught by CJ. He'll just get about two yards on that one. Make a second down and eight coming up. A good way to start off just a little bit as J.J. Luongo has been a little ice cold in the last few games. Not the great numbers he was putting up earlier this season, but still being an effective player in the passing game and the running game. Last week he had a great re return, excuse me, run. It was 61 yards for the first play of the game. Sanders gives the ball off to CJ. This time, CJ will get up the middle of the field. He'll get away from the defense, and he'll get down to about the 47-yard line. That should be enough for a first down there. What a great start here for Dixie State. Two plays already. One play to CJ Longo on the check down out of the pass, and you hand it to him on the second play for him to get the first down. A great way for Dixie State to start on homecoming day and senior day. Sanders has a three bunch set to his left. Two tight ends on the line, and Sage is still in the backfield. Hands the ball to Sage again, and he'll just get about two yards on that as it will be second down and eight coming up. Third rush there by CJ, but still able to get a couple yards there, even though Dick Colorado School Mines was showing the blitz and they brought it. Dixie State's O-line was still able to block it. Sanders will line up in a shotgun. Two receivers to his left and right on second down and 10. Sanders looked deep, deep down the field, and it'll be incomplete. Just out of the reach of Desmond Osborne, the six foot six Megatron on this team. Osborne has played in a few games earlier this season as we all thought he was going to be the great Megatron of this team. But his touches have gone down the last few games. He did have one reception against Shadron State. That was for a gain of 14 yards. We'll see if they use him more today. As Sanders lineup for a third down and eight, two receivers to his right and left. 
Colorado School Mines showing the blitz. Sejay's motion out to the left. Sanders looking, throws it. Osborne yet again. He got away from the from the defense, and he'll get down to about the 20-yard line. A gain of 12 yards on that first down and 10 on the 20-yard line for Dixie State. Great job there by Mike Sanders. Being patient there, letting Desmond Osborne come out of his break on that slant route and just waiting and biding his time, ready to give it to Desmond Osborne as soon as he was ready. First down and 10 at the 20-yard line for Dixie State here, knocking on the door, trying to take the lead early. Yoshikawa motions over from the right to the left in the backfield with Mike Sanders and Sejay. Sanders takes a snap, is looking downfield, throws it again, and it'll be caught by his receiver, Xavier Smith, and he'll get down to about the 10-yard line. It should be enough for a first down. Excuse me, that was De Dewan Dantzler on the reception. And again, it should be enough for a first down as he just came right through the middle of the field, got up, got off the field and got enough there. It should be first down and 10. Excuse me, first down and goal for D.C. State. Sanders lines up with two receivers to his right and left. Motions over Yoshikawa to his left. Seijay still in the backfield with him. Hands the ball off to him. No, he'll face it, throw it to the end zone, and out of reach. He was trying to connect with Desmond Osborne yet again. Trying to go early to him in this game as he faked the handoff to CJ. Everybody bid on that and just overthrew him just a bit on that one into the corner of the end zone. Sanders got to bring it back just a little bit there. He would have had him in the end zone for the touchdown. Second down and goal coming up for Dixie State. Numbers for them on the season. They're 26 to 36 with 21 touchdowns in the red zone this season. Sanders looking, looking, looking. He throws it to the end zone again, and it is incomplete yet again. He was looking for Dewan Dancer on that in the corner of the end zone. Not going to get it there as we fourth down and goal. <coughs> A good little route there. Dancer looking for the penalty there. Did not get it. As the defense was all over him on that one. Maybe should have thrown the fly there. It would have been first down and goal on the one. But that's not going to get it. As Dixie State will go for it on fourth down and goal. Showing that they still don't have a lot of trust in A.J. Jurgensen when it comes to the field goals. Sanders motions over to Connor Smith to the left. Hands the ball off to A.J. A.J. will try to get to the corner of the end zone. And he'll get to about the five-yard line there. He will not reach it. And it'll be first down and 10 for Colorado School Mines on their own five-yard line. I don't blame him for going there on that one. I think it was the wrong call as it was a little, a little like a hook and ladder there by Connor Smith and CJ Luongo. Not a bad play, but I wouldn't have run that there deep in to deep into the red zone, and excuse me, that was third down and goal, and it's fourth down and goal coming for A.J. A.J. gets the kickoff, and it's good. It's good. A.J. Erickson puts Dixie State. I'm a little surprised by that one as he's had a lot of trouble with kicking field goals this season. Puts Dixie State up 10-7 to as Dixie State leaves this game early in this first quarter here. 646 left to go in the first quarter here. We're going to take a minute timeout here on Radio Dixie and be right back with more on the Trailblazer Network. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to Radio Dixie 91.3. 646 left to go in this first quarter here at Trailblazer Stadium as Dixie State leads Colorado School Mines early in this one. A.J. Jurgensen put up the 19-yard field goal to give him the lead. Here on the kickoff, Farmer is back there yet again. He'll get to about the 20 and just about the 22-yard line. That's where Colorado School Mines will take over for the third time in this quarter here. If you are just joining us, Dixie State is leading Colorado School Mines, who are sixth ranked in the country in the country in Division II play, 10-7 to here early. They got a – excuse me, Dixie State got a touchdown off a kickoff return by Simpson on an 85-yard touchdown return on that one. And then took the lead with a kickoff with a field goal by AJ Jurgensen here in early in the moments. First down and ten by Colorado School Mines. Harker will hand it off again to sorry. 
Lost my track there. Cameron Mayberry, he'll get, gain about two yards on that one as we second down and eight coming up here. Colorado School Mines took the early lead in this one, but Dixie State has fought back and fought back well as we second down and eight coming up here. Harker will hand it out to Farmer. Farmer will get out to the edge and will get the first down and more. Look like he got a gain about two yards after the run as it'll be first down and 10 at about the 40-yard line there. That's where they'll start their next point of this drive. Colorado School Mines not known for getting slow starts off in the first quarter as they have 50 points. They average 50 points per game, and it is scary when this offense gets onto a roll. First down and 10 coming up here. Harker has two receivers to his right and left and hand it off again to Farmer, and he'll get a gain about two, two and a half yards, make it second down and eight coming up for this Colorado School Mines offense. Farmer and Mayberry being the two running backs for Colorado School Mines this year. Mostly Mayberry who has got about 200 rushes for about 1,200 yards. But Farmer has seen some touches this year, 60 rushes and about 400 yards for him. Then two running backs love splitting the backfield as Mayberry is back in at running back. Harker motions him over to the right. Harker will keep it and will try to get up the middle of the field. He's got green grass in front of him to the 30, to the 20, and he'll be down at about the 21-yard line. A gain of 52 yards on that one. Nobody there in the middle of the field. Everyone winning coverage. And the only two people left were the free safety and strong safety there. Jalen Moore and Trayvon Watson brought him down late. A gain of 52 yards on that one. Make it first down and 10 at the 21-yard line. Colorado School Mines trying to take the lead back as they had it earlier in the first quarter here. Harker has three receivers to his right and one receiver to his left. Hands the ball off yet again to Mayberry, and he'll get a gain about one yard there, make it second down and nine. Dixie State's defense this season not been totally horrible as they've only given up about 31 points. But on the run, they've only given up about, uh, about four yards a carry, which isn't very, which isn't that bad. Just wish that was a little bit better numbers, but only giving up 180 yards in a game. So this defense is much of a bend but not break type run defense. Hopefully that can transition to rest of the defense. Second down and nine coming up for Colorado School Mines. Harker fakes a handoff to Mayberry again. He'll throw it to the to the corner. And it is incomplete. Trying to throw it to the corner of the end zone there. And it'll be incomplete there. Mike Jones with the coverage there all over him on that one. As he was trying to connect with Riley Hoff on that one. Just a little bit out of far reach there by Isaiah Harker. Not known for missing a lot of balls this season. Harker comes into this game. 68% of his completes his 68% of his passes have been completed for about 34 touchdowns. So he knows how to get that ball out of there. Third down and nine. Two receivers to his right and left. Harker looking around, looking around. Pump fakes, throws it, and it'll be incomplete. As it'll be four down and nine coming up. For this Colorado School Mines team, Wes Moyahi on the coverage there. Bats the ball down late. Nobody was fooled on the Dixie State defenses. Now, Shiloh Pritchard got to the quarterback, got to Harker, excuse me, and forced the rush pass. And Moyahi almost had himself an interception there and possibly a touchdown run if he could have got out front. Colorado School Mines center field goal team out. It will be a 38-yard field goal from the 29 from the 28-yard line. The kick is up and it is good. It is a tie ball game here late in the first quarter. Colorado School Mines and Dixie State are tied up at 10 all. 347 left to go in this first quarter here. We're going to take a quick timeout and be right back with more on Radio Dixie 91.3. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to Radio Dixie 9 1.3 as we are at Trailblazer Stadium today here for homecoming day and senior day here at Dixie State University. Congratulations to the 18 seniors on this team as there was a pregame ceremony for them. And congratulations to all their success here. As Colorado School Mines will kick it back out to Simpson as he'll try to get up the Trying to get it out, but not. He'll take a knee in the end zone. This time, he will not return it for another touchdown as Dixie State will bring out their offense yet again for another drive. Dixie State's drive was consumed of 10 plays, 
consuming about six minutes on the clock for about 60, uh, was about 72 yards. A good, good drive by them. Carrasco Mines' last drive was a consume of eight plays for about two minutes and only got three points. Both teams put two field goals to tie this game up at 10, and that's where we stand right here. Mike Sanders has two receivers to his right. Westmore, excuse me, Yero Chicago on the line. And he'll just give it out to CJ, and he'll just get back to the line of scrimmage there. No gain on that one. So far, so good for this Dixie State offense to start off with. CJ having most of the load as he's had about three runs, including this one about that's his fourth rush of the day. Not terrible, but could obviously do a little better. We'll see if they get better at that today. As Sanders lines up with three receivers to his right, two tight ends on the line. Sanders fakes the handoff to CJ, throws it deep down the field, and is caught by Connor Smith. And he'll be down at about the 44-yard line, making first down and 10, coming up for Dixie State. Excuse me, Connor Miller, not Connor Smith. Connor Miller's been uh, been taken out of the lineups and been playing in and out for the last few games, dealing with some injuries and just dealing with the fact there's a lot more guys getting back healthy. And he has been having a little bit less numbers, but a great reception there by him as his first down and 10. Sanders has two receivers to his right, two tight ends on the line. He'll hand it off to Seja. He'll get up the middle of the field and get a gain about three yards on that one, making second down and seven coming up for this Dixie State offense. Again, a balanced system starting off for Dixie State as they're trying to feed Seja Luongo the ball and trying to get Mike Sanders as many times with the ball as he can, as he can fling that rock. As Xavier Smith will motion over to the left, throws it to him. Xavier will try to get out the middle of the field and will get down to about the 50-yard line. We'll get a gain about three yards on that one as we third down and about four coming up here for Dixie State. A good little design play there, a little wheel route there by Connor, I mean, excuse me, by Xavier Smith to come out out of the motion, but not going to get enough there to get the first down as it'll be down at about the 50-yard line. A third down and four coming up for this Dixie State offense. As they've been struggling on third downs this season, only 33% of the time they've been completing them. Let's see if the offense can do it this time. As Sanders will get it out to his receiver, and he'll be down about a yard short. Connor Miller yet again, a fourth down and one coming out here. As Sanders had two receivers to his right on that one, and a bunch set again on the line. Miller caught it. He slipped. And they couldn't get the first down there. Would have had it by a long shot if he would have just got it there. As Dixie State will keep their offense out on the field. Easton Smith is that quarterback. Possibly possibly a run design play here. No, Smith will just get it off and will kick it. And it will land at about 20. They say about the 20-yard line straight on it. That's where Colorado School Mines will take over yet again in this first quarter. 48 seconds left to go here. Colorado School Mines and Dixie State are tied up at 10. Obviously, possibly, obviously and possibly a lot of people were expecting this game to be kind of a blowout by this point already. Maybe Colorado School Mines leading by three touchdowns, but uh-uh. No. This Dixie State defense and offense said no. Not today on homecoming. Not today on senior day. We're going to have a dogfight here. As we are all tied up at 10. Harker will take over the offense and will hand it off to Mayberry yet again. He'll get up the middle of the field and we'll get a gain about five yards on that one. Second down and five coming up. They will line up in a shotgun. Three receivers to his right on that one. We'll see what they do as they will go back to no huddle here. And we'll get quickly back to the line. Harker being okay today on the stats, but mostly the carries have been given to Mayberry as they're trying to get the run started off and probably will feed the offense in the passing game and make it a lot easier to throw it late later in the game. We will see if that works or not as Harker will get out and we'll have another quarterback draw. He'll get out to about the 44-yard line and we stop there. A design run yet again and that's going to end the first quarter there as we have a tight ball game here at Trailblazer Stadium. Dixie State and Colorado School Mines are all tied up at 10 ending the first quarter. We'll have the start of the second quarter right after these few breaks on the Trailblazer Network. 
It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to Radio Dixie 91.3 as we will get the start of the second quarter going here in a few minutes. If you are just joining us, we have a tied ball game here at Trailblazer Stadium between Colorado School and Mines, the sixth-ranked team in the country in Division II play. Coming into this game 9-0 and 8-0 in overall in RMAC play against the Trailblazers of Dixie State who are coming into this game after losing three of their last four games, starting off the season pretty good but slumped late. Parker will take the snap, has two receivers to his right and left, and will get it out to Riley Cuff yet again. Hoff, excuse me, on that one, it'll be first down and 10 at about the 49-yard line, dead on on the 50-yard marker, on the 50-yard 50 50 yard line, as I keep fumbling my words and trying to get a little bit ahead of myself as I keep doing play-by-play and color commentator today for Radio Dixie 91.3 at Trailblazer Stadium. For homecoming and senior day. First down and 10. And Harker will hand it on to Mayberry. He'll get up the middle of the field for a good gain there. And he'll be down at about the 30-yard line. A gain of 21 yards there by Colorado's goal mines. Mayberry getting yet another long run in this game. That is what Colorado's goal mines likes to see. They're going to pound the rock and try to just wear you down. Then later in the game, they're going to fling the rock and try to get put up many points as they can. As a no huddle is called yet again, two receivers to his right and left. Mayberry in the backfield. Harker will hand it off to him yet again, and he'll get a gain about three yards on that one as it'll be second down and seven. Mayberry just trying to get up the middle of the field, but Remington Kelly and Trayvon Watson were right there to stop him and make sure he got no more than that. Second down and seven. Harker has a trip set to his right. One receiver to his left. Mayberry still in the backfield with him. Dixie State showing the coverage. They'll hand it off to Mayberry yet again. He'll get up the middle of the field and will get down to about, they say, the two-yard line. He was trying to reach for the end zone. They did not give it to him as Colorado School Mines will yet go again on a quick no huddle here. The start of this second half, Colorado School Mines wants to pound it hard and pound it tough. Harker will hand it out to Farmer as he'll check in as the running back, and he'll walk right into the end zone. Colorado School Mines leads this game yet again with another rushing touchdown, one by Mayberry and one now by Farmer as they take a 16-10 lead with 13-20 left to go in the second quarter. Again, we mentioned Dixie State's defense is a bend but not break. Wish it would have bended a little bit more there. Possibly could have got a couple more stops and forced them to kick a field goal, but that it did not happen. Colorado School Mines lines up for the kick, and it is good. Colorado School Mines takes a 17-10 lead here at the beginning of the second quarter. 13-20 left to go. We're going to take one more timeout here and be right back with the kickoff here on the Trailblazer Network. As we are at Trailblazer Stadium today, as I am trying to figure out the computer system here, as I am on my own here with the play-by-play, the color, the pregame, the halftime, and the postgame guy, I am all in one today here at Trailblazer Stadium for the homecoming game and senior day here for Dixie State as they'll play against Colorado School Mines. We have a good one here for you as you are just joining us. Colorado School Mines is leading this game early, 17-10 to with about 13-20 left to go as they'll kick it back off to Dixie State, and Simpson would take a yet another knee in the end zone, and the, D- and the uh, Dixie State offense will start on their own 25-yard line. As last drive for Dixie State was on a three and out, close to being a first down and 10, but could not get it. Colorado School Mines last drive was seven plays, two and a half minutes, excuse me, three and a half minutes, and about 80 yards, and a good play, good drive there by them. As it'll be first down and 10, Mike Sanders has two receivers to his right. We'll hand it off to Sage on a quick sweep and we'll get nothing there. He'll get swallowed up and lose about three yards on that one. I'm not sure about that call, but okay. But that was not a good play there by Dixie State. They need to call a little bit better plays. You're only trailing this game by seven. I would not try to experiment too much. Try to keep it simple for Mike and Sage as they try to get this team to a win over Colorado School Mines. 
They'll motion Xavier Smith from right to left. Two receivers on the left side for Mike. Mike takes a snap. He's looking downfield, throws it deep down the field, and it is incomplete. They're showing it. It'll be third down and 12 coming up as Giovanni Sanders was the intended, tar- was the intended target there by Mike. And they, yeah, it was just a little bit too far out towards the towards the sideline and not enough for Giovanni there as he was trying to slide in and catch the ball at the same time. Mike Sanders will change the play. He has a three-bunch set to his left, one receiver to his right. CJ is still in the backfield with him on his third down and 12. A crucial third down here for Dixie State as they want to keep this drive alive. Sanders with the snap. Throws it deep, and it'll be caught by Xavier Smith. Wasn't enough for the first down. They're going to look and say it was. Good play there by Mike Sanders out of the trip. Bunch said Dwan Dancer running a little curl out there. Caught it and got a number for the first down. As will be first down and 10. As I said, Dwan Dancer was the reception. Excuse me, it was Xavier Smith. Sanders will line up in a shotgun yet again. Two receivers to his right. Sage still in the backfield. Casey Allison on his own on the left side. Sanders takes a snap. He's looking deep downfield and will be sacked. That is the first time he'll be sacked in about three games there. It'll be a loss of four as it'll be a long second down and 14. As number 91, Brockton Sterling, the redshirt junior defensive tackle, got to Mike there and got the sack for them as it'll be second down and 14 two receivers to his right and left for Mike CJ is still in the backfield with him motion CJ to the right Sanders takes a snap throws it and it'll be caught by Xavier Smith and he'll get a gain about seven there it'll be a third down and seven not a bad design play there yet again Xavier Smith is going to do a little curl route in the middle of the field and Sanders is going to connect with him there and try to get gain most of the yards back after he got sacked late on the first play of the first time as, as he got sacked for the first time today. Lawrence Stark is in the backfield with Mike Sanders. Colorado School of Mines showing the blitz. The Dixie State offense picks it up. Sanders throws it, and he was sacked at the same time. He will not get the ball off as it will be a third down and 12 coming up. For, uh, excuse me, fourth down and 12 coming up for Dixie State. Dixie State doing all they could on that one there. Mike waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Could not get the ball out. That was be a fourth down. And the punt team comes out. Josh Carlson having a great year this year. Not, not punting it a little bit more than we want him to do as he averages about four punts per game. You would like to have that number down to about two. Not try to send your punt team out there that many times. He'll get a booming kick off as Farmer will flag it down at about the 27-yard line and that's where Colorado School Mines will take over for their second drive of the second half. Colorado School Mines will take over at the 27-yard line as they lead this game 17-10 to with 9.53 left to go in this second quarter. If you're just joining us, if you've been joining us this whole time, this game is exciting to begin with. As I'm looking out at the crowd, it is a good crowd today on hand for a homecoming and senior day today. Great game starting off so far, but we wish Dixie State was leading this game. Hopefully they can come back and lead this game yet again as Isaiah Harker will hand it off again to Mayberry. He'll break out from the defense. He'll get out to about the 45 to the 40 and will be dragged down at about the 39-yard line. We'll go from the 27-yard line to the 39-yard on the other side of the field. It'll be a first down and 10 coming up here for Colorado School Mines. Harker just handed it off to Mayberry. He'll get up the middle. He just got up the middle of the field and broke out and broke a couple tackles there. Mike Jones and Trayvon Watson, the last two to tackle him late. That's going to be a first down and 10 at the 39-yard line for Colorado School Mines. Harker lines up in a shotgun. Three receivers to his right. Motions over Harker. His motions over Mayberry from left to right. And Mayberry will try to get up the middle of the field. We'll just get a gain of one yard there. That'll be second down and nine. Obviously, Isaiah Harker up for being Division II Player of the Year and Armac Player of the Year. Player of the Year. He's having a great year this season. 34 touchdowns, four interceptions for about 2,900 yards. 
The numbers that he's been putting up are ridiculous, and the numbers that Colorado School Mines have been putting up in their last nine games, they've been going on a win streak, have been outstanding as they've been only averaging less than 42 points per game. It has been scary with his offense. Harker will motion out Mayberry two from right to left. Harker looking downfield, and we'll just throw a little slant route. It was incomplete there. That's going to be third down and eight coming up. Harker not known for missing a lot of plays there as he was trying to connect with Brody Oliver, his lean receiver, as he just dropped his leg coming out of his break on the slant route. And maybe Dixie State can get a break here. As Colorado School Mines is 63 of 124 today, they're one of two on third downs. They complete 50% of their third downs. This team is very efficient when they're put in these moments. Let's see if the ore diggers can get this third down here and can have the drive stay alive as Harker will get in the backfield. No. Wait, no, he was sacked as I lost my concentration there. Dixie State will get the sack there as Harker was trying to get away. A little broken play there as Farmer and Harker were on the wrong page there. And Martini will get his fifth sack of the day as the ball came out late. Farmer will jump on top of it and it will back. It will end the drive by Colorado School Mines. Fourth down and 16 here for Colorado School Mines. They'll line up for punt. Dixie State showing the blitz. They'll get the punt away and it's a terrible punt. Xavier Smith will return it to about the 32-yard line off a dead hop. Excuse me, he got to about the 35-yard line. Not 32. I got to focus here a little bit more. But a very bad punt there as it was a rugby-style punt, and it wasn't a very good one. It went off the foot. It was a bad kick, and Xavier Smith just took advantage of the bad coverage there as well and got to about as far as he could. And that's where Dixie State will take over. Again, if you're just joining us, Colorado School Mines leads this game 17 to 10 with 7:48 left to go. Dixie State having one touchdown and one field goal. Colorado School Mines getting two touchdowns and one field goal in this game. Sanders will take the snap on a first down at 10. Fakes the hand off the stage that he'll throw the ball to Dwan Dancer. He'll try to get up the middle of the field. He'll be at to about the 50 to the 40 to about the 30, and will get dragged out of bounds at about the 28 yard line. They're going to mark him back to the 31 as I'll be first down and 10 for Dixie State. And man, oh, man, are they playing with a burning fire today as they're playing for those 18 seniors today on senior day, trying to give them a win in front of the crowd today as this is the last home game for Dixie State. A great run there by Dewan Dancer as he got the reception late and just broke it for a good game there as it'll be first down and 10. Sanders will take the snap. Is looking deep downfield. Will throw it to Yoshikawa, and it is incomplete. Just a bit ahead of Kentaro Yoshikawa there. Could have been a first down and goal at about the four-yard line. Instead, it'll be second down and 10 at the 31-yard line. As there is a flag down, it looks to be a holding call against Dixie State, and that will back him up. No, it's a legal formation call. And he'll back him up five yards. Instead of being at the 41, he'll be at the 36-yard line. I wish I had that rest mic here on Dixie State. I could have put that over the air, but I just got to look at what he does on the field. First down and 15 coming up for Dixie State here. Sanders has two receivers to his right, one receiver to his left. Yoshikawa is on the line. CJ is in the backfield, hands the ball to CJ. He'll try to get out the corner of the end corner of the field and will get nothing there he'll be backed up he'll lose about four yards on that one that'll be a long second down and 19 not the way you want to keep this drive alive after a gain of 22 yards from Dewan Dantzler to keep going backwards losing nine yards from a penalty and then losing four yards on the run we'll see what Dixie State can do as they have two receivers to his right and left Mike Sanders with CJ in the backfield, motion CJ to the right. Sanders will dump it off to him. He'll try to get to the middle of the field. And CJ will get back about four yards. What he lost on the last play there. Be, as it will be a third down and 
15. A good little check down there by Mike Sanders trying to stay safe. As Sanders will have three receivers and a bunch set to his right. One receiver to his left as that's Casey Allison. Lawrence Starks lines up in the backfield with him on a third down and 15. Dixie State is two of four today on third downs. Colorado School Mines showing a cover blitz. Lawrence motions over to the left, throws it, and it is caught. No, dropped at the last moment there. Casey Allison had it for a second, dropped it late. Would have had a first down there as it will be fourth down and 15 coming up for this Dixie State offense. A good ball thrown there by Mike Sanders. Looks like it was broken up late by the defense and just could not complete it. As Dixie State will go for it on fourth down and 15, a long 15. Sanders has a bunch set to his left, one receiver to his right. Sajay's lined up in the backfield with him. Sanders takes a snap, is looking deep downfield, will throw it, and it will be incomplete as Sanders was lit, would hit late. And he's a little slow getting off the field there with a little bit of a limp. We will see if Dixie State will go to the backup quarterback, which is Easton Smith. He's had some time playing this season as Sanders took a good hit late there. Number 90, Luke Jeter, Jeter, excuse me, was there on the hit. As Colorado School Mines will take over at the 40, excuse me, at the 36 yard line. On a first down and 10, Harker has two receivers to his right, one receiver to his left. Tight end on the line, hands the ball out to Farmer. Farmer will get up the middle of the field and will get a good gain there of five. As will be second down and five coming up. Colorado School Mines leading this game 17 to 10. As this was a close fight in the first quarter. Let's see if it stays that way going into this, going in towards the late of this second quarter as there's five minutes left to go before halftime. Second down and five coming up for Colorado School Mines. Harker has two receivers to his right and left. Mayberry lined up in the backfield. Fakes the hand out to Mayberry. Throws it deep down the field. And nobody's there. It was caught by. And he'll be down at about the 10-5. Was he pushed out of bounds? As I was trying to catch up with that play there. Brody Oliver all alone on his own. As there was a flag thrown late. And it is against Colorado School Mines. It is a pass interference against Brody Oliver. The one who had it. He was all alone there about the 40-yard line. Went up the middle of the field. Trayvon Watson pushed out of bounds at about the 8. But they'll be backed up about 15 yards of Colorado School Mines back at about the 25-yard line. A huge break there by Dixie State as it will be a long second down and 25. Harker has three receivers to his right. Hands the ball to Mayberry as he'll try to get the yards back and will just get back to the line of scrimmage there. Alex Luger with the huge hit there to push him back as it'll be a third down and 25. Good stop there by Dixie State's defense as Colorado School Mines will line up in a no huddle yet again. Harker has two receivers to his right and left. Mayberry lined up in the backfield with him. Third down and 25 here. Harker takes a snap. He's looking downfield, will throw it, and it will be caught, but it will be not enough for the first down. As Brody Oliver was, the reception is there. Was attended target there, and he got the ball. A good play there as he was stopped by Mike Jones and Darren Jones at the same time as we about a fourth down and six. A gain of 14 on that play there. And it will stop the drive there. Colorado School Mines lines up for the punt yet again. A rugby style punt. And it will get away. It will get out of bounds. It will be out of bounds at about. They're still trying to mark it at the 40-yard line, a good spot there for Dixie State as they still trail this game 17-10 to to Colorado School Mines. 3.37 left to go in this second quarter. We're going to keep it here live on Radio Dixie 91.3 at Trailblazer Stadium as it is homecoming day and senior day for Dixie State Trailblazers. Again, on that drive, Dixie State got lucky as there was a pass interference for 15 yards against Colorado School Mines. 
Otherwise, Colorado School of Mines would have had another touchdown. It would be leading this game by 14. Instead, they only lead it by seven. Sanders has one receiver to his right and left. Yoshikawa and Hobbs are on the line. Sanders fakes the handoff. We'll throw it to Giovanni Sanders. And it was caught by him. It'll be a gain of 11 yards. He'll be down at about the 49-yard line on the other side of the field. A good play there by Mike Sanders, Giovanni Sanders, with Sanders connecting to another Sanders there. Sanders to Sanders, I should. As we first down and 10 at the 49-yard line, Sanders lined up with Sage Long on the backfield. We'll hand it off to Sage. He'll get up the middle of the field and will get to about the 40-yard line. He'll be a yard short of the first down, second down and one. Coming up for Dixie State as they're trying to tie this ball game before the end of this half. A good run there by Sejay up the middle. A little quick draw there as he's starting to get red hot in this game. He's been a little ice cold in the last few. We'll see if he can get up more. Sanders fakes the handoff to him and he'll throw it deep down the field. And it is caught for the touchdown. DeWan Dancer with the touchdown to make you 17-6. to six. So I held my breath there wondering if it was intercepted or not. And DeWan Dancer pulls that ball out. A great throw there by Mike Sanders to DeWan Dancer for the touchdown to make it a one-point lead for Colorado School of Mines. 17-16, to 16, Dixie State trails this with a pending PAT here with 2.40 left to go in the second quarter. What a great throw there by Mike Sanders to DeWan Dancer as the PAT is up and it is good. AJ Jurgensen connecting for two for two on PATs and one for one on kickoffs today. It is a tied ball game here late in the second. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to Radio Dixie 91.3. As we are at Trailblazer Stadium today, Dixie State and Colorado School Mines are tied up at 17. If you're just joining us, it has been a crazy dogfight today as it is homecoming day and senior day for Dixie State here as they play against Colorado School Mines, the sixth-ranked team in Division II play. They come into this game undefeated and looking to finish the season 11-0 and just trying to go right past Dixie State to 10-0. But Dixie State has other plans today as this game is all tied up at 17. A.J. Jurgensen gets the kickoff. Farmer will be down at about the 25-yard line, and that's where Colorado School Mines will start their next drive. That has been a complete dogfight today. Dixie State getting a couple breaks, but they're they're capitalizing on that one as Harker fakes the handoff to his running back and will get it out to Brody Oliver. He'll be just about a yard short. Of the first down, make a second down and one coming up here for Colorado School Mines. Been a good dog fight today, again, as I emphasize that, but it has been that way all day. As Brody, and excuse me, as, as Isaiah Harker will hand it off to Jordan, uh, Brandon Farmer, and he'll get up the middle of the field. And then there's a fumble on the play. Dixie State looks to recover the play, and yes, they did. Anthony Yarbrough picks it up late. It'll be first down and 10 coming up for Dixie State. Shiloh Pritchard popped it out of Jordan Farmer's hands. And Anthony Yarbrough jumped on top of it. It'll be first down and 10 coming up for Dixie State at the 47-yard line. What a complete changer right here real quick here as there's 209 left to go in this second quarter. Can Dixie State take advantage of this and take the lead? Sanders motions over to Yoshikawa from left to right. Hobbs is on the line. Hands the ball to Sage. Sage will try to get the middle of the field and will get to about the 39-yard line as he was running and trucking as much as he could, trying to break as many tackles he could there as flags fly in late. We will see what it is hearing from the refs here. Let's see what the refs have to say. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 58, 15-yard penalty. The down counts, second down. As that is a huge, huge penalty against Dixie State after Sage got a gain about six yards. Brandon Turner, the, the left tackle there, 
got a uh, got a good late hit there after the play, but I wouldn't have thrown the fly there as he was still trying to still stay with the play. He probably didn't hear the whistle late, but it'll back him up 15 yards at the 46 yard line. The down will count, and it'll be second down and 10. As a timeout is taken late, as there was people running on and running off the field. And Dixie State was all confused on that one. Again, if you're just joining us, Colorado School Mines and Dixie State are tied up at 17 all here late in the second quarter. Colorado School Mines getting two touchdowns and one field goal. Dixie State getting two touchdowns and one field goal themselves. AJ Yerkeson is two for two on PATs and one field goal. Mike Sanders. With both touchdowns today, throwing through the air. Good touchdowns by, actually, no. Sanders had one touchdown. Simpson had a 85-yard touchdown return. How can I forget that? As I was all jolted and excited about that one. As that was a good kickoff return there. Cameron Mayberry and Brandon Farmer, the two running backs on Colorado School Mines, having the touchdowns today for Colorado School Mines. Second down and 21 coming up for Dixie State here as we're coming back here on Radio Dixie 91.3. Sanders looking ready. Takes the snap. CJ Longo lined up in the backfield. Sanders will throw it deep and will be incomplete. Trying to connect with Devin Osborne there. And it did not get there. Devin Osborne does lead the team in drops this season with a total of seven. I don't know what is with him. He might have the case of Butterfingers, but that dude needs to get his hands fixed as he dropped one there as he could have had that one. Simply, yeah, he could have had that one, but he just dropped it. Third down and 21, a huge third down and 21 coming up for Dixie State here. Let's see if they can get some yards back or complete it as flags will fly in late. It will be a false start against Dixie State. Again, against Brandon Turner, the left tackle, jumped a little bit early there. As we'll back Dixie State up even more. Third down and 26 coming up here. As we're looking at the replay, and not much of a movement, just a little bit of a head move. I don't know how that counts as a false start, but I'm not the refs. As we third down and 26, Sanders takes a snap. He's looking deep downfield. We'll throw it deep downfield. We'll connect with Xavier Smith. And did he get enough for the first down? Did he enough? They're saying yes, he did. What a great throw by there by Mike Sanders. He went all the way deep down the field. Xavier Smith with a little streak route down the middle of the field. As it'll be first down and 10 with about a minute left to go. As I don't know why the clock is running. If you get a first down, the clock stops. But they left, a, they left the clock running. 55 seconds left to go. Let's see what Mike Sanders can do as he has two timeouts here. Motion over Xavier Smith. Sanders looking deep downfield. will throw it to the end zone, and it is caught for the touchdown. Isaiah Wooden on the reception, his first touchdown of the season, and Dixie State takes the lead 23-17. 40 seconds left to go in the second quarter. The underdogs are leading Colorado School Mines here late. As Colorado School Mines was all confused on that one, Isaiah Wooden on a little corner route through the middle of the field. And an absolute perfect throw for Mike Sanders as that is his second touchdown of the day. 23-17 with a pending PAT. It is up and it is good. Dixie State, the underdogs at home in homecoming day and senior day are leading the sixth-ranked team in Division II play by one touchdown with 40 seconds left to go. What an amazing first half by Dixie State. As not only they kicked the door open, they have destroyed it and are telling Colorado School Mines, no, you will not be beating us. We're going to take a break here as I'm going to try to cool myself down from all this excitement here on the Trailblazer Network. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. 
We now return to you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to Radio Dixie 91.3 as we are at Trailblazer Stadium today for homecoming day and senior day for Dixie State here as we have 18 seniors being represented today. They had a ceremony, pregame ceremony today. Congratulations to all those 18 seniors. But that is not only the excitement today. If you are just joining us, Dixie State is leading the sixth ranked team in Division II play. Colorado School of Mines by one touchdown, 24 to 17, with 36 seconds left to go in the second quarter. Dixie State getting that touchdown off a Brandon Farmer fumble on the last drive by Colorado School of Mines. Let's see if they can hang on to the ball this time as Harker will lead them out to the offense. Two receivers to his right and left. As he'll get the snap up, and it was batted down. It looks to be Remington Kelly on that bat down as it'll be second down and 10 with 33 seconds left to go. What a great game by Dixie State. Again, it is senior day today and homecoming day, and Dixie State coming out with everything they got today to pull off the upset today. It has been phenomenally perfect by Dixie State here as second down and 10 roaches approaches. Harker will throw it out to his best receiver, Sean O'Dell, there on the reception as he got out of bounds. It'll be down at about the 50-yard line, first down and 10 with 30 seconds left to go. Harker perfectly connected with him there as he will step out of bounds as it'll be first down and 10. What can Colorado School of Mines do here? Is they're trailing here late in the second quarter. Harker takes a snap yet again. He's looking around. We'll just dump it off to Mayberry, and Mayberry will get to about the 49-yard line on the other side of the field. 22 seconds left to go here. What a great start yet again. I'm going to emphasize it again by Dixie State as Abraham Reinhardt was on the tackle there late. Colorado School of Mines takes a timeout here. Obviously to conserve time as I am still excited here in the booth. I am losing my mind. I'm having people banging on the door asking me, are you okay? And I'm telling them I'm losing my mind because Dixie State is leading this football game over Colorado School of Mines 24-17. It has just been an exciting football game in front of the home crowd today. Second down and one coming up. Second down and one coming up. Harker looking around, has Mayberry in the backfield with him. He has two receivers to his right and left. 22 seconds left to go. Dixie State will go into coverage. He'll try to get away and will overthrow. Brody all over there by Harker as he's had a tough day today. Not been perfect for him. As this is possibly the first time Colorado School of Mines has been trailing all day. I'll try to find out more information on that. But Colorado School of Mines looked all, it looks all but confused. Excuse me, looks all confused as they're trailing this football game with 17 seconds left to go. Maybe if I keep saying it'll be a jinx, we'll see about it. We're just going to have to play the game. As there looks to be a timeout taken by Dixie State which is a little confusing there. I don't know why they took a timeout, but that is that. Third down and one coming up here. 17 seconds left to go for Colorado School of Mines as they're trying to tie this game up. And I've done a little digging and research. This is the first time Colorado School of Mines has trailed in a football game this season in the first half. They're usually the ones that are leading considering they outscored their opponents 50 points to 21. A 29-point difference on that one. Mines is not used to being trailing in this in this game as they are trying to win complete outright of the RMAC this season as they are 9-0 and 8-0 overall in RMAC play. They're trying to go 10-0 and 11-0 on the year and trying to get ready for Colorado State Pueblo, who they will see in the RMAC Conference Championship and the winner of that game will go to the Division II playoffs. Dixie State showing the blitz here on third down and one. Harker takes a snap, hands the ball to Mayberry. He'll try to get the first down. And did he get it? He looks to got it, but they have settled on a spot. It is on the 49-yard line, and it looks to be fourth down and about inches. 
severe inches. Looks to be about six inches short. Will Dixie, will Kyle Roscoe and Mines go for it? We will see. Their numbers on the year when it comes down to fourth down, they're 10 of 17 with about 60% of the time completing them. If they go for this, they have to take an immediate timeout. And I don't think they have any more timeouts. I think they took one in the first quarter and have taken their last two. This is a throw to the end zone type play. If they don't get it, they're going to have to take an immediate a uh, spike here to save time and to get about 10 seconds left. We will see if they do that. As I am still shaking up and excited in the booth today here at Trailblazer Stadium. This has been an awesome game. As Colorado Mines shows, they'll bring out their offense. <coughs> By no surprise, Dixie State, Dixie State showing man to man. Can Colorado School Mines convert this? Harker takes a snap, hands, fakes a hand out of the Mayberry. He'll try to get away from the blitz. No, he'll be sacked back at the 49-yard line. Shiloh Pritchard, the redshirt senior on senior day, will get the sack there and will turn it over to Dixie State offense at the 48-yard line. A great blitz there by him to get away. Harker trying to get away from Shiloh. He will not. Grabbed him by the shoulder pad and brought him down. A first down and 10 coming up for Dixie State's offense as they lead this game by seven with 7.6 left to go in this second quarter. Let's see what they do with the final play of the first half. Will they go just fling it to the end zone? I would not be surprised if they do that. Sanders takes a snap, has three receivers to his right, and... Was looking for Casey Allison there on a little shallow route. Did not get it as it'll be second down and 10 with 4.2 seconds left to go. A good ball don't a good ball thrown there by Mike Sanders as he was hit late after the as he was hit as he was getting that ball out. Four down four point two seconds left to go. Second down and ten. Sanders takes the snap. Has two receivers to his right and left. We'll throw a little screen pass to Dwan Dansler. And he'll get out to about the 43-yard line. And that will be the final play of the first half here. As Dixie State is leading the second sixth-ranked team in Division II play. Colorado School Mines 24-17. What an amazing first half by Dixie State. We will see if they can continue that as we're going to take a short break here and be right back with the halftime show here on Radio Dixie 91.3. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to Radio Dixie 91.3. If you are just joining us, we have a great one here at Trailblazers Stadium between Dixie State Trailblazers and the ore diggers of Colorado School Mines. Dixie State is leading this football game 24-17 after the first half here. It is halftime here at Dixie State as there will be more ceremonies for the 18 seniors today as it is senior day and homecoming day for Dixie State here at Trailblazer Stadium. Again, Dixie State is leading this football game over Colorado School Mines 24-17. Looking at, at some of the stats, Dixie State on the ground has 42 rushing yards, while Colorado School Mines has 180, 181 through the air. Dixie State averaging about 4.2 yards a carry while Colorado School Mines is averaging 7.9. But through the air, that is where Dixie State has got them on the ropes. Dixie State has 20, 263 yards through the air, and Colorado School Mines only has 99 yards. Dixie State averaging 4.8 yards a, a catch, while Colorado School Mines, the number one team in offense and defense when it comes to the RMAC stats, they are only averaging 9.9 yards a catch. That has been a crazy, crazy game as they have just been about even on plays. Dixie State having about 34 plays for 278 yards. And Dixie, and excuse me, Colorado School Mines has 41 plays for 280. A couple highlights through the half. Dewan Dansler having a touchdown reception late in the first quarter to make it tied up as 17 all. Isaiah Wooden on another reception there late in the second quarter, make it 24 to 17. That has been the difference there for them. Also on the reception was A.J. Simpson. The kick returner had a 85-yard 
touchdown run after Colorado School Mines went up 7 to nothing on top of Dixie State. That has been one of the main differences in the game for Colorado School Mines. Harker having one touchdown through the air on that one, and Brandon Farmer having a one touchdown on the ground has been their only counts of touchdowns today as they also have one field goal through the air. Dixie State having one field goal as well. Some other games are going on. I wish the RMAC would update their scoreboards. But we believe Western State, eh, what I'm looking at, Carl, we, well, let me see, 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 let me see. As I'm trying to fumble my words here. Colorado State Pueblo is leading Black Hill State 24 to nothing. They're at the Colorado State Pueblo was 81 on the year, trying to finish off Black Hill State, trying to get to the RMAC Conference Championship against Colorado School of Mines who right now are trailing to our great team, Dixie State. Also in action, Shazron State and South Dakota Mines. That is in a close dogfight there. Shazron State trying to get into the conversation of the RMAC Championship. They're 6-2 overall. They're winning this game 29-19 over South Dakota Mines, who is 4-5 on the year. One more game going on today. That will be at 7 o'clock. It will be Adam State University versus Colorado Mesa. That game will be at 7 o'clock. Adam State is the next opponent for Dixie State. That game will be on the road. We'll have live coverage of that game as well next week. We are going to take a short time out here. Be right back with more stats and highlights and more information all from the second half here on Radio Dixie 91.3, the Trailblazer Network. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to Radio Dixie 91.3. We are here, I am here, excuse me, live at Trailblazer Stadium for homecoming day and senior day here at Dixie State University as Dixie State is leading the game at halftime over Colorado School of Mines, the ninth ranked team in the country, 24 to 17 at halftime. That is how it stands right now. A couple little scores and updates from big-time college football. Obviously not the main concern of us around here, but anyway, to get the scores out, number six-ranked Georgia is leading Kentucky 7-0. Texas is leading West Virginia 7-3. Purdue and Iowa are in a good dogfight. 14-10 is the lead for Purdue. NC State is leading Florida State 16-0. Michigan is on top of Penn State early late in the first quarter there. They're on top of them 7-0. Boston College and West Virginia, excuse me, Virginia Tech are tied up in a 7 to 7 all game there late in the first quarter. Some final scores from earlier today. Number 2 ranked Clemson beat up Louisville 77 to 16. They stay perfect on the year at 9 and 0 and 6 and 0 in ACC. 10th ranked Ohio State after they lost to Purdue last week beat Nebraska 36 to 31. They'll go 9 and 1 on the year, 5 and 1 in big time in Big 10. Football and Syracuse won today over Wake Forest to keep their hopes alive, winning their game 41 to 24 over Wake Forest in that one. And finally, Auburn, who has had a rough start to the middle of their season, won their game over Texas A&M 28 to 24. Some games coming up later today. Fourth ranked Notre Dame will play uh, Northwestern. That is going to be a good one there. And the big time game of the day, number one ranked Alabama goes up against third ranked LSU. In a divisive game, who whoever wins that game will definitely be in the college football playoffs. Whoever loses will be out. That is that from college football. We're going to get to more from here on halftime. We'll talk about some things going around Dixie State, and we'll give you an update of what happened with the volleyball team last night here on Radio Dixie 91.3. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to Radio Dixie 91.3 as we are here live at Trailblazer Stadium here for Senior Day and Homecoming Day here for Dixie State as they lead this game 24-17 at halftime. We are still at halftime, yes, I know. But they lead this game 24-17 early in the first half. Over Colorado School Mines, who are 9-0 coming into this game, ranked 6th in Division II play. Dixie State coming off losing three of their last four games. They are 5-4 and four and have been eliminated from RMAC Championship contention. 
but they they have everything to play for today as it is against Senior Day as there's 18 seniors being represented today. Congratulations to all those 18 seniors and their accomplishments here at Dixie State University for the Dixie State football team. Let's get you a little updates from Dixie State sports that went on yesterday as the women's soccer team wants to keep their chances alive to make it to the Division II playoffs against Colorado School Mines in Golden, Colorado, and they lost that game one to nothing. The only lone scorer, Jennifer Kendall for Colorado School Mines, put the put that score late in the game, and that was just about it. Colorado School Mines is the number is the fifth ranked team, and they'll move on to play for the championship on Sunday. Dixie State is still allowed to make the Division II playoffs, but there'll be a little bit of a lower seed as that'll drop them to lower in the playoffs. And the women's volleyball team last night, it was senior day for about 16 years yesterday. Congratulations to all those seniors as they beat Westminster foundly 16, or excuse me, three games to none in that one. Not even a close one there for both teams. Uh, looking at Megan Trainer led them in kills. Aces was led by Jordy Nelson. Blocks was led by Lauren Gamble. Jordy Nelson had 18 assists on the day and Cara Moore had 13 digs that great game by Dixie State as they will now share, I, I believe they will share some of the RMAC Conference Championship there. They will be in the playoffs where they will be at. We'll get more information for you on that as the week goes on. But they will be playing for the RMAC Championship. They're going to be playing on Wednesday against Colorado, Colorado Springs here in St. George. That game will be at 7 o'clock. Don't forget to watch that on live videos and live stats. That's going to be exciting as the women's volleyball team qualified for the Division II playoffs and are one of the top seeds in the RMAC championship. Also, if you're looking to watch something just a little bit bored, the women's basketball team, excuse me, we're playing an exhibition game at BYU. We'll have live stats on that game. That game is going to start at 6 o'clock in Provo, Utah. We're going to take a final timeout here. We'll be right back with more on Radio Dixie 91.3. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to Radio Dixie 91.3. Again, we are li- I am live here at Trailblazer Stadium for Senior Day and Homecoming Day here at Trailblazer Stadium for the Dixie State Trailblazer football team. They still lead whole, uh, Colorado School Mines at halftime 24-17. Why did I say it like that? They didn't change any scores. Nobody's played yet, but we are going to get half. Uh, uh, we're going to get the second half just started underway. A couple updates. If you are just joining us here, Colorado School Mines is trailing Dixie State 24 to 17. Colorado State Pueblo is leading their game at halftime 24 to nothing over Black Hill State. Most likely, Colorado State Pueblo and Colorado School Mines will be in the Armand Conference Championship playing for a spot in the Division II playoffs. But if Shazer State can get a couple more wins and maybe some miracle magic happens, they will be in the conversation as they also leave their game at halftime 29-19 over South Dakota Mines. Also, Western State, who has got a couple wins late in their season, also lead, um, I believe it was, or let me see, 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 let me see. Come on, come on, come on, come on. They lead their game over New Mexico Highlands 24-20. That game is at halftime as well. We will see if they can get their third win on the year after starting 0-7 on the season and getting a couple wins late against a couple bad football teams. Well, let's see if they can capitalize and make it more wins on the season here. As again, if you are just joining us here live, it is senior day and homecoming day here at Trailblazer Stadium. Dixie State leading this game. We got about a minute left to go until the second half starts up. Here, but an amazing start by Dixie State. Really a surprise, surprise. Obviously, considering Colorado School Mines is 9-0 and on the year, they come into this game ranked 6th in Division II play, one of the best teams in Division II so far this season, putting up 50 points per game, only allowing their opponents to score 21 points. And Dixie State has given them a complete dogfight, answering every time Colorado School Mines had a bell, every time they scored a touchdown, Dixie State came right back. Obviously, things could have changed. There was a penalty late in the second quarter that brought back a Colorado School Mines touchdown. Would have made it 24-10 to and would have made a little bit of a climb 
for Dixie State to come back, but there was a pass interference against the offense, and that brought that back and killed that drive by Colorado School Mines. And because of that, Dixie State was able to get the ball back, tie the game there, and then get a fumble late in the second quarter and also take the lead on that. Isaiah Wynn on the touchdown reception by Mike Sanders, who's had two touchdowns today so far, playing fairly well. The running game is not up to par, but it has been okay in a sense between both teams as the kickoff is about to start getting underway as I start now focusing on this game again and giving you a play-by-play and color comment on every play here. Obviously, my emotions have been running wild today as Colorado School Mines comes into this game, ranked sixth in the country, and I just guarantee you nobody thought this would happen at halftime, but we thought as it is with Dixie State teams as the kick is underway and is deep down the field, and Simpson will return it at the goal line. He'll try to bring it out, and he'll get to about the 18-17 yard line between that. Should have just probably taken a knee in the end zone and probably would have brought it out about the 25-yard line. Not a good decision there, but we'll see what Dixie State can do. As again, if you were just joining us, they leave this football game 24 to 17 late in late in the first half, and now leading it at the second half, the start of the third quarter. Mike Sanders has two one receiver to his left and right, two tight ends on the line, and CJ in the backfield. Hands the ball to Sage. He'll try to get to the middle of the field. He'll get to about the 20-yard line. There, it will be second down and eight. Not many rushing yards by Dixie State's offense today as there was only a cumulative amount of 48 yards in the first half, but 263 yards through the air. We will see if the running game gets picked up more. Second down and eight coming up for Dixie State here. Mike Sanders has two receivers to his right and left. Sage is still in the backfield with him. Carrasco Mine showing the blitz. Sanders gets it away. He'll get it away to Desmond Osborne. He'll try to get the first down, and he does. As we have first down and 10 coming up for Dixie State here. As no, I am wrong on that call. They'll mark it short. It looked like he did get the first down as he was pushed right about at the marker. As it'll be one yard short, it'll be third down and one. Sanders has two tight ends on the line, a bunch set formation to his right. Sage is still in the backfield with him. Hands the ball off to Sage. No, we'll fake it and we'll just throw a wide receiver screen pass to Xavier Smith as he'll get up the middle of the field down at about the 45 yard line. A good little drawn pass there. Excuse me, you'll get at the 35-yard line as I'm trying to see it all the way from the top of the booth here at Trailblazer Stadium. It'll be first down and 10 at the 35-yard line. Sanders takes a snap. Two tight ends on the line. Hands the ball to Sage. He'll try to get up the middle of the field and will just get back to the first, um, excuse me, to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10. Again, not much of a balanced system by Dixie State today. has been mostly favored by the pass, but that is what has gotten them the lead today, and they keep going towards it as it keeps working. As Mike Sanders, is, this is his fifth game of the season. We have not seen any of the backup quarterbacks come in, Easton or Trent, so that must mean a good thing by Mike as he motions over two tight ends from right to left. Desmond Osborne and Giovanni Sanders are at the top of, of the left side. Sanders throws it deep down the field, and it was caught by Giovanni Sanders. He'll be out of bounds at about the 27-yard line there. First down and 10, and again, the passing game is working perfectly today as Mike Sanders had all time he wanted there in the pocket and found Giovanni Sanders open in the middle of the field and got him the first down as he was pushed out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. He was being covered by Kobe Brewster, the redshirt freshman, strong safety of Colorado School Mines. And there's about 12 minutes left to go on the clock here with a first down and 10. Sanders has two receivers to his right and left. Sanders takes a snap. He's looking downfield. Throws it deep down the field towards the end zone. And it is caught for the touchdown. DeJuan Dantzler, his second touchdown of the day. Dixie State leads 30-17. With 11.55 left to go. 
a great pass by Mike Sanders, standing straight in the pocket. Dewan Dancer beating the coverage and getting the touchdown. A pending PAT here as Dixie State will take a 13-point lead here. What a great throw there by Mike Sanders to Dewan Dancer into the end zone. The PAT is up and it is blocked. It was blocked at the line. They will go nowhere as it was recovered by Dixie State. It will stand as 30 to 17. Dixie State leading it here at the start of the third quarter. 11:51 left to go in this third quarter here. We're going to take a quick timeout here. We'll be right back with more on Radio Dixie 91.3 Trailblazer Network. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to Radio Dixie 91.3 as we're here at Trailblazer Stadium for the football game between Colorado School Mines, the Ore Diggers, who are 9-0, 8-0 coming into this game against the Trailblazers of Dixie State, who are 5-4 and 5-3 and and in Armac play. Dixie State leads this football game 30-17 to late, early in the third quarter, excuse me, as there's 11.51 left to go on the clock. A.J. Jurgensen sends the kick down the field, and it is a good one. Josh Johnson on the reception at about the 8-yard line, and he'll be tackled down at about the 19-yard line, and that's where Colorado School of Mines will take over their next drive. It has been a perfectly great game by Dixie State. couple miscues by Colorado School of Mines, and Dixie State has taken advantage of every single one of them and putting the pressure on Colorado School of Mines to keep their undefeated streak open, excuse me, alive and try to keep them from being the undefeated team. Mayberry gets the handoff and he'll get to about the 30-yard line as he'll be down. No, there is a fumble on the play and the whistles were not blown. There is a flag late. Trayvon Watson on the fumble recovery. As it stands, it is a fumble to begin with. The refs are looking around, looking for an explanation. We will see if we can get one here from the refs. Wow. Holding for 58, the offense. Penalties inclined, result of play. State first down. And the fumble will stand. Cameron Mayberry, not known for putting the ball on the ground, got through the middle of the field, and Remington Kelly popped it out late. Trayvon Watson on the, re- on the recovery and got it out to about what looks to be about the 25 yard line, I believe, as I'm trying to look down the field where they marked it. And we first down and 10 at the 20, at the 20 yard line, excuse me, as Mike Sanders has a bunch set formation. And as Connor Miller and CJ Luongo line up in a cat, in a cat formation, excuse me, wildcat formation with a trip set, and Connor Miller will keep the ball, and he'll get to about the 15-yard line, and he fumbled the ball late as Dixie State got the ball back, and they'll put the ball back on the ground and give it back to Colorado School Mines as they were on the return, on the reception return there as Colorado School Mines will get the ball back right after Dixie State got the fumble there. Not what caught Dixie State wanted to do after getting a fumble recovery, but giving it back. But we'll see what they can do. Eric Harker has two tight ends, two receivers to his right and left. Fakes the handoff to Mayberry. We'll try to get away from the blitz. We'll throw it, and it was caught. Yes, he'll be down at about the 25-yard line. David Somers, the redshirt senior, caught it late. Eric Harker trying to get away from the blitz as Abraham Reinhardt came on it hard. And Harker got it away perfectly as it'll be first down and 10 with 11 minutes left to go. First down and 10. Harker has three receivers to his right, one receiver to his left. Mayberry lines up in the backfield. He'll get the ball again. No. Harker got a quarterback sneak there and was down at the line of scrimmage. No gain there. It'll be second down and 10. A little fake read option there as Harker kept the ball and did not get away as Anthony Yarbrough was there on the tackle. Second down and nine coming up. Colorado School of Mines is trailing this football game 30-17 to, to Dixie State with 10.30 left to go on the clock. 
Harker has three receivers to his left, one receiver to his right. Harker will try to keep it himself, and he put the ball on the ground yet again. And it was recovered by his line. A sack there by Anthony Yarbrough. Yet again, a play made there by Dixie State's defense. Great job there as the ball came out late, and one of the linemen jumped on top of it for Colorado School Mines. Colorado School Mines has been completely flustered and are trying to get back into this football game and take control. Harker has two receivers to his right and two receivers to his left. Mayberry is lined up in the backfield with him. Harker takes a snap. Blitz is coming. We'll try to get away from him, and he did. He got it to his receiver. Riley Hoff on the reception. and He'll get a first down and 10 for Colorado School Mines. A great play there as Dixie State tried to bring the blitz. Harker stood in the pocket perfectly and got that ball away. First down and 10. Harker has two receivers to his right and left. Looking downfield, Harker trying to get away from the blitz. No. He'll get sacked back at the line of scrimmage. Sebastian Martini, his second sack of the day. The senior trying to go out with a home run today as it is senior day here. A great tackle by a great sack by him as it will stop Harker from trying to get out of the pocket. Second down and 10 coming up for Colorado School Mines. Two receivers to his left, two receivers to his right. Harker has. Mayberry is lined up in the backfield. The blitz is coming. Harker throws it and it is caught by his receiver. Brody Oliver. A great reception there. This will be third down and four. Again, the blitz came. Harker got away, got it away early. Excuse me, got it away late. As that will be ball will be placed at the 46 yard line. Make it third down and four coming up. Harker has two receivers to his right and left. Mayberry lined up in the backfield with him yet again. The blitz is picked up. Harker still looking, looking, looking. Throws it to his tight end. He caught it. And it'll be down at about the 40-yard line. Actually, that was caught, get caught by Cameron Mayberry out of the backfield on a little check down as Harker guided him out towards the front, out into the middle of the field and got everything he could on that one as his first down and 10. Harker lines up in the shotgun yet again. We'll throw a little wide receiver screen pass to his favorite target, Brody Oliver. He'll try to get out to the numbers and will just get a gain about two yards there as it'll be second down and seven. Second, excuse me, second down and eight. Harker gets him back to the line of scrimmage quickly. Three receivers to his right and one receiver to his left. Farmer is then at, at running back. Harker takes a snap. Dixie State bringing the blitz. Hands the ball to Mayberry. He'll try to get up the middle of the field. he get to about the 30 to the 20. And he'll be down at about the 19-yard line as Dixie State was looking for a flag on a false start by the lineman but did not get it there. And Mayberry took advantage of the confusion by Dixie State's defense and got out the middle of the field for a good game. Down at the 19-yard line. It is first down and 10. 6.45 left to go in this football game. Colorado School Mine Trail is 30-17 to Dixie State. First down and 10, taken by Harker. Throws it to the end zone, and it's caught by his tight end. Touchdown. Excuse me, his wide receiver, Brody Oliver. And Colorado School Mines is chipping at Dixie State's lead here late in the third quarter. As it is 30-23, to Colorado School Mines still trailing Dixie State here. Brody Oliver just broke on a post route and got away from Darren Jones. Darren Jones cannot catch up to him as he was trying to stop him from the end zone as the PAT is up, and it is good. Could not stop him, and Colorado School Mines answers back, making the lead only by seven for Dixie State. Excuse me, by six. Dixie State leads this football game 30-24, to 634 left to go in this game as we are going to take a short time out here and be right back with more on Radio Dixie 91.3. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to Radio Dixie 91.3 as we are here at Trailblazer Stadium for the homecoming game and senior day 
of Dixie State University here. The Trailblazers lead the Colorado School Mines or Diggers 30 to 24. If you are just joining us, it has been a wild football game as Dixie State has three touchdowns and one field goal for their scoring. Colorado School Mines has one field goal and three touchdowns for them as well. They will take over at about the 25 yard line as it'll be first down and 10. Dixie State took the lead late in the first half to make it 24 to 17. And so far, Dixie State has got one touchdown in this first half, along with Colorado School Mines, who got one as well. Sanders will lead them out there on first down and 10. Has two tight ends on the line, two receivers to his right. And hands it off to Sage, and he was met in the backfield immediately. Not even going to get close to the line of scrimmage as he was lost for a two there. Eaten up there as the cover as the as the broken play got broken up in the middle of the field there in the middle by the guard in the center and it'll be second down and 12. Sanders has one receiver to his right and left two tight ends on the line yet again Lauren Starks is in at quarterback excuse me at running back and he'll pass it to Sanders will fake the handoff to Lawrence Stark, excuse me, and will give it off to Desmond Osborne for a as game of six yards. who it is against. As there's a penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct against Colorado School Mines. It doesn't look to be on the player. It looks to be on the bench. And that will push the offense of Dixie State's 15 yards to the 45-yard line on the other side of the field. In good position there for Dixie State to put more points on the board and extend their lead. Sanders has two has two receivers to his right. Lawrence Starks and Sajay's lined up in the backfield. Yoshikawa's on the line to the right. Hands the ball to Starks. He'll try to get up the middle of the field and will get a gain about two yards there. It'll be second down and eight. A huge penalty there by Colorado School Mines to give Dixie State an extra 15 yards there as they're showing the replay and a couple of the coaches were doing some were doing some extra things on the sideline, and that's what drew the flag there by the refs as it is a second down and eight. Sanders has two tight ends on the line yet again. Koshikawa, Yoshikawa and Cobbs. He has two receivers two on the line at the right. And almost caught by Xavier Smith across the middle of the field. He dropped it late as it will be a third down and nine. Dixie State still leading this football game 30 to 24 as there's 358 left to go in the third quarter here. Dixie State already picked up one first down. Can they continue that motion here? Lawrence starts his motion from the receiver position to the running back. Sanders takes a snap, is looking down deep field and is caught. It was caught a little bit late. Connor Miller had the reception there. A uh, post route in the middle of the field. A well-thrown ball there by Mike Sanders to Connor Miller. And he'll be down at about the 22-yard line as it'll be first down and 10. 3.40 left to go in this third quarter here. Sanders has three receivers to his right, one receiver to his left. Lawrence Starks is still at court, is still in the running back position. Colorado School Mines shows the blitz. Sanders throws it to the end zone and just a bit over the head of Dewan Dantzler. As I was trying to catch up with that play as it was going. Colorado School Mines brought the blitz and the heavy blitz. Sanders able to get that ball out on time. Just Dewan Dantzler was a little confused where the ball was supposed to be. It wasn't there on time. Second down and 10. 3.23 3.23 left to go here. Yoshikawa and Cobbs are in a tight end. Sanders, one receiver to his right and left. Seja is lined up in the backfield. They hand the ball off to him. He'll try to get as many yards as he can. It looks like he got about three yards on that one. As it'll be another third down here. It'll be a third down and seven. Third down and seven here for Dixie State. 2.50 left to go in this third quarter. It is an empty set. Sanders has three receivers to his left and two receivers to his right. And there was a false start. Nathan Avicies 
Ball started on the right tackle position. It'll be a third down and 12. Third down and 12 here. 2.29 left to go in this third quarter. Lawrence Starks is the running back. Yoshikawa is on the line. Three receivers to his left. Motion's over. Motion's over Sanders to the right. Sanders looking for his receiver and is incomplete there. As will be a fourth down and 12 coming up. Sanders looking for Giovanni Sanders on that reception and it did not work there as it was broken up late. Fourth down and 11, 214 left to go. Dixie State showing that they're going to go for it. They're 11 of 24 for 45% on the season on four downs. Sanders has two receivers to his right and left. Looking, 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 throws it, and it is caught by his receiver. Dewan Dancer will be down at about the 10-yard line. First down and 10 coming up for Dixie State. A huge pickup there by Dixie State. Mike Sanders throwing a perfectly thrown ball to Dewan Dancer, who got down at about the 10-yard line on a good 20-yard post route there. First down and 10, 150 left to go in this third quarter here. Sanders motions over Connor Miller from right to left. Three receivers are now on the left side. Sanders looking, 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 throws it. No, gets away from the pressure and won't just throw it away. Just throws it away into the end zone. Nobody opened there. Sanders almost sacked late on the play. Took a late hit at the end, but is still able to get back up. Sanders had all time there, but could not find anybody open and just had to get rid of it. It'll be second down and goal coming up. Dixie State is one for one today in the red zone as they have one field goal today. Can they capitalize on this good field position yet again? Second down and goal, and there looks to be a timeout taken. There was a timeout taken by Dixie State before the clock ran out. As there's frustration and confusion and anger on the coach's sideline, as they're frustrated with their players not getting the right call ready. We are going to keep it here live. Again, if you're just joining us, I'm going to emphasize it more on. It is homecoming day and senior day here for Dixie State. Dixie State leading this football game 30-24 to here over Colorado School Mines, ranked sixth in the country in Division II play. 9-0, 8-0 in RMAC play for them. Dixie State is 5-4 and four and 5-3 five and three in RMAC play. They went from tied for second in the conference to all the way down to fourth after losing three out of their last four games. What will Dixie State call on this second down and goal? They only have eight yards to go on this one. Can they come up with a good play to get that touchdown? Sanders has a bunch, has a jumbo set on the line. Two receivers to the right. Hands the ball to Sage. Sage should have going to try to get up the middle. He'll walk into the touchdown. Excuse me, that was Lawrence Starks. Wrong guy. Lawrence Starks just walked into the end zone, and Dixie State leads it 36 to 24 late in the third quarter. Lauren Starks with a run up the middle, got a little spin move, got away from the defense, and now Dixie State leads this football game by 12. 129 left to go in the third quarter here. Dixie State looking to go on it for on a two-point conversion. They're 0 for 3 on the year. Sanders takes the snap, is looking, throws it to the end zone, and it is... Caught, it was caught for the two-point conversion. Desmond on board, caught it this time, held on to it. Dixie State leads this football game 38 to 24, 129 left to go. In this third quarter here, we're gonna take a timeout here and be back with more here on Radio Dixie 91.3, the Trailblazer Network. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return to you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to Radio Dixie 91.3. We are here live at Trailblazer Stadium as Dixie State is leading Colorado School Mines, the sixth-ranked team in Division II play, 
38 to 24 with 129 left to go. As I and Martin Kelly here are on the play-by-play, the color commentator. I was the pregame guy, the halftime guy, and I will be the postgame guy later today as Dixie State kicks it back out of the Colorado School Mines, and they'll fair catch it at the five-yard line, and that's where Colorado School Mines will start their next drive. Excuse me, no, they'll start it at the 25, so I, I'm, I'm guessing that if you fair catch it, you'll start at the 25 automatically if you're 10 yards or back. Isaiah Harker, Isaac, Isaac Harker, the quarterback for Colorado School Mines, has three receivers to his left and one receiver to his right. Brandon Farmer is the running back in the backfield, hands the ball off to him. He'll try to get up the middle of the field, and he'll get a gain about two yards as it will be second down and eight coming up. Cameron Mayberry now checks in as the running back. A good little stretch stretch run there to get a few yards there as now Dixie State leads this game by two touchdowns. Second down and six coming up. Harker takes the snap, has two receivers to his right and left. Tries to connect with Brody Oliver, and it'll be incomplete. Darren Jones all over Brody Oliver on that one. Broke it up late as it'll be a third down and six. Harker has three receivers to his left and one receiver to his right. Cameron Mayberry is a running back. He'll throw it out to Brody Oliver yet again, and he'll get the first down and more. He'll be down at about the 41-yard line. A good pickup there by Colorado School Mines. First down and 10, 45 seconds left to go in the third quarter here. Harker has three receivers to his right, one receiver to his left. Brandon Farmer is the running back. Fakes the handoff to him, throws it to his favorite receiver, Brody Oliver, and he dropped it late. Could not hang on to it. As will be second down and 10 with 30 seconds left to go. Harker looking for Brody Oliver on the left side and could not hang on to it late. Excuse me, could not hang on to it, and it was broken up late by Mike Jones. The two Jones brothers on corner on both sides have been a lockdown corners all season long. Can they continue it into the fourth quarter here? Harker steps up and throws it to his receiver, and it was caught. Riley Hoff on the reception there. It'll be a third down and about three. Harker looking and step, had to step out of the pocket late and step into that throw as they'll now rush back to the line as they will try to get the snap off late before the, half, before the third quarter ends. He will do that, and he'll be out of bounds at about the 45-yard line. Sean O'Dell on the reception there, and that will end the third quarter here as we have an exciting football game here. Dixie State leads it over Colorado School Mines, 38-24 to going into the fourth quarter here on homecoming day and senior day here at Trailblazer Stadium. I'm going to keep it here with you guys on this end as I sound like I'm a recorder. It has been a pretty good football game up to this start. Dixie State surprising everybody today as they lead this football game. And they've been playing spectacularly as they've had three sacks on the defensive side. One fumble, excuse me, two fumbles. One fumble led to a touchdown. The other was given right back to Colorado School of Mines after Connor Miller fumbled him, fumbled on his play. But Dixie State getting five, excuse me, Five touchdowns and one field goal in this football game. Colorado School Mines only having four touchdowns, excuse me, three touchdowns and one field goal. And Colorado School Mines has been completely flustered as it is a first down and 15 coming out of the break. Harker has three receivers to his right and one receiver to his left. Harker takes the snap, fakes the handoff to Cameron Mayberry, throws it deep down the field. And was just a bit in front of his receiver. Just a bit out too far, about a couple yards. Was trying to connect with Riley Hoff on that one yet again. Got a bit too far out there by Harker. Who has not been at all on his game today. As Hoff had a walk-in touchdown if Harker would have connected with him on that one. As he'll bring up a second down and ten. Cameron Mayberry still in at running back. 
Parker has three receivers to his right and one receiver to his left. Mayberry goes from right from left to right. Parker steps into his throw and it is caught by Brody Oliver, his favorite receiver. And he was down at about the 30-yard line, a gain of 22 on the play. A good thrown ball there by Harker to Oliver as they've been trying to connect with themselves all day. Oliver only having six catches today below his average on the season so far. Harker again has three receivers to his right and one receiver to his left. Hands the ball to Mayberry as he'll get up the middle of the field to about the 25-yard line as it'll be, about sec- as it'll be second down and five. Again, this is the first time Colorado School Mines has trailed late. This late into a football game. By this time, in most of their football games, they have led it every single time into the fourth quarter. As we have an injured player down on the field, I cannot tell who that is. It looks to be Abraham Reinhardt, who is the one shaking up and taking off the field. As I am going with that speculation, as I still cannot tell, but it is a second down and five coming up. 14-17 is the time left. Second down and five coming up for Colorado School Mines here. Harker has two receivers to his right and left. Mayberry still in at running back. Fakes the hand out to Mayberry. Throws it to the end zone, and it is caught. No, drop late. Brody Oliver had it late. Uh, he, he had it so close for a touchdown and dropped it late, and it looks to be shaken up on the play as he was wide open between three defenders. How he got that wide open is still a mystery as Brody Oliver is still down on the field, it looks to be. We'll stay here and keep it here as it will be a third down and five with 14 minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. They are still attending to him as it wasn't a bad thrown ball. It was a about as good as a ball as Harker has thrown all day. Just missed it a little bit on that catch. And it looks to be Harker got up. He went up pretty far for the catch and tried to come down with it. He lost it. It looks like he hit his head on the bottom of the ground. And it looks to still be on the field. As now they're, now they're starting to help him up and get him off the field here. We hope he's still, we hope he's not injured badly. Never want to see an injury on anybody, especially when these guys are going as fast as they are and trying to win a football game. Definitely when it comes to head injuries, you don't want to see anybody really get hurt, and hopefully they come back healthy. As we will resume play now, as it is a third down and five, 14 minutes left to go. Here for Isaac, Isaac Harker and this Colorado School Mines offense as they still trail this football game by two touchdowns to Dixie State. A big third down and five here for the Mines offense. Harker motions one tight end from right to left. Hands the ball to Mayberry. He'll get up the middle of the field. He'll get the first down and more. He'll be down at about the 19-yard line as it'll be a first down and 10. A good little counteraction run there. As he got, as Mayberry got everything he could on that run, as Trayvon Watson was the one that got him late. First down and ten. Harker will hand it out to Mayberry. He'll try to get up the middle of the field, and he will get nothing there. As Shiloh Pritchard, the red shirt senior, was there late to hit him and push him back. Mayberry trying to run the same, the Colorado School of Mines offense trying to run the same team, same play as they ran before, and this time, Shiloh was not, he was not, uh, he was not fooled, as I am trying to catch my words together, here on a second and 10. Harker throws it to the end zone yet again, and it was trying to connect with Riley Hoff, and it was incomplete. Third down and 10 coming up here. Harker looking for the end zone on that one, and just a bit over the head of Hoff, that is now a third down and 10. Harker has Mayberry in the backfield. Three receivers to his left, one receiver to his right. Motions Mayberry from left to right. Looks towards the sideline for more signal calls. Motions over Hoff from one inch to another. Takes a snap. Harker looking. Scrambles outside the pocket, steps in it, and overthrows his re- receiver yet again. 
Had him wide open in the end zone. Cameron Mayberry, the running back, was in perfect position for that. And Harker just overthrew him just a bit much as we fourth down and 10. As Colorado School might as well go for it here. Harker has three receivers to his right, one receiver to his left. Mayberry is the is the running back in the backfield. Hoff is the receiver on an own island. Harker takes a snap, is looking to the end zone, throws it, and will connect this time for the touchdown. David Somers, his second touchdown of the season, and will cut that lead of 14 to 6. Excuse me, 14 to 8 with a pending PAT here. Harker looking all day, had all time in the pocket, and fouled David Somers on a post route into the middle of the field and got the touchdown. 38 to 30 with 12.49 left to go with a pending PAT here. The kick is up and it is good. Scott Marshall, who has been completely perfect all day today, makes it only a seven point lead for Dixie State. 12.49 left to go in this football game. We're going to take a quick timeout here and be right back with more on Radio Dixie 91.3, the Trailblazer Network. This is a public It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to Radio Dixie 91.3 here as Colorado Mines kicks it back to Dixie State. Dixie State is leading this football game Early in the fourth quarter here, 38 to 31 on top of Colorado School Mines, who comes into this game undefeated on a first down and 10 here by Mike Sanders. Hands the ball to Sage. Sage will try to get up the middle of the field and will just be met back at the line of scrimmage. Nothing there on that one, as it'll be a quick second down and 10. Coming up for Dixie State. We will see what. We will see what Dixie State draws up on a second down and 10 here as they still lead this football game 38 to 31 over Colorado School Mines. Second down and 10. Mike Sanders has two receivers to his left and right. Throws it deep down the field and it is incomplete. Devin, Desmond Osborne, the Megatron on this team, was the intended target and dropped it late. Sanders put it perfectly where it had to be. And Desmond just could not hang on to it as Mason Pierce, the freshman freshman corner, just put his hand up there and got enough to break up the pass. A quick third down and 10 for this Dixie State offense. They've been four for seven on the day. Can they complete a big one here? Sanders will fake the snap to CJ Luongo and he'll get to the first down. And that will get enough. First down and 10 coming up for Dixie State. As it looks like the ball was fumbles, the snap was was botched, and Sage just picked it up and made a smart football move there and ran it all the way for a first down. A great play there by CJ Luongo. First down and 10. Mike Sanders hands the ball off again to CJ. No, Mike will keep it and will get about five yards on that one as that is Mike Sanders' first run of the season on that one. Not really used to seeing Mike Sanders run. And questionable call there, but I'm not the head coach, so I'll just stick with it as it goes. As now Connor Miller is in at the Wildcat formation. Takes a snap. It's a direct snap towards him, and it's a direct run. He'll try to get something, and it looks like he just got a yard on that one. As it, will be, as it will be a third down and four. Connor Miller trying to get up the middle of the field as it was a complete direct snap towards him as he was in that quarterback. And it looks like Mike Sanders is at back at quarterback. It was just a couple little drawn-up plays there by the coach to see if they can get Colorado School Mines off their deal. As there looks to be a timeout taken by Dixie State late. I believe that is their second timeout of the half. As they're looking at third down and three here. 10 20 left to go in this football game. Dixie State leading this game 38 to 31. As I am, the rest of people are shocked by that. Dixie State has played this game almost perfectly today. 
And every time Colorado School Mines has thrown them a curveball, they've been able to knock it out of the park for a home run. It is a huge third down and three here. We will see what they've drawn up as I am losing a little bit of concentration here. Trying to gather up a few bits of information here as it is a third down and three. Sanders has a bunch of trip sets to his left. One tight end, one receiver to his right. Motions over Xavier from left to right. Takes a snap. Is looking, looking, looking. Has all day. Throws it deep downfield. And it's just out of the reach of Dewan Dantzler. Coach McCurr looking for the flag. And he will not get one. As it will be a fourth down and three coming up. Not not totally too far out. Mike would have put a little more air under that. Waited just a few more seconds. Maybe you could have had Dewan Dantzler for a touchdown. And that would have been a complete walk-in touchdown as Josh Carlson will come out to punt for the second day, second time of the day. The punt is away and is a booming kick. And it'll be fair catch at the 25 yard line by Riley Hoff. That's where Colorado School Mines will take over their next drive of this half. First down and 10, 10 minutes and 10 seconds left to go. In a good tight ball game here. As the biggest lead has been today of Dixie State by two touchdowns of 14. Colorado School of Mines had the lead earlier today at 7 to nothing, and that is the last time they had the lead. Can they get it back? Harker has three receivers to his left and one receiver to his right. Mayberry in at running back. Harker will try to keep it himself and will get out to about the 32-yard line. That'll be a gain of seven. Second down and three coming up. A good little read option there by Harker. Everybody bit on the run by Mayberry, and Harker was just able to get outside the numbers and get something out of nothing. Second down and three coming up. As there are flags flying in here, we will see if it was a false start or an encroachment. As Remington Kelly did jump, but as it is against the offense off on the offensive line, and it will back up. Colorado School Mines from a second and three to a second and eight. We'll back them up to about the 27 yard line. Second down and eight coming up here. Mayberry has, excuse me, Harker has two receivers to his right and left. Mayberry lined up in the backfield. Harker looking, 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 escaping the pressure and gives it out to Mayberry. He'll get up the middle of the field and will get to about the 40. He's still running to the 30 and will be pushed out of bounds there. As it stands now as a first down and 10 with 9 minutes and 16 seconds left to go. And there seems to be some confusion. The refs are all gathered up in one position and, uh, and, uh, and in another. We will see what we can figure out here. As it will stand, it looks to be first down and 10 at the 22-yard line with 9.16 left to go. It looks to be a timeout taken by Colorado School Mines. As I am still confused on why there was a stoppage in play, but I am just going to go with the flow and say that the reps got something wrong. But whatever it is, they have stopped playing. It looks like a team, it looks like Colorado School Mines did take a timeout here late in the fourth quarter. Again, if you're just joining us, Dixie State is winning the football game. Leading Colorado School Mines 38 to 31 here late in the fourth quarter. The highest lead today was four, was 14, and that was by and that was by Dixie State. Twice they led that by that much. Excuse me, once they led that by that much. They led by 13 at one point in this game. Colorado School Mines had the lead earlier in the game at seven to nothing, but that's the last time they had the lead. Second down and four. Hands, Harker hands the ball to Harker hands the ball off to Mayberry. He'll just walk into the end zone. As now we have a tight football game here. As Colorado School Mines trails Dixie State 38 to 37 with a pending PAT here. As Colorado Mines looks to take back the lead. Excuse me, looks to tie this game up with 8:29 left to go. The kick is up, and it is good. Scott Marshall has not missed one today. And this game is all tied up at 38. 
829 left to go here. As I am left a little bit speechless. We will see what Dixie State does here coming out, out of a kickoff. We're going to take one more timeout here on Radio Dixie 91.3, the Trailblazer Network. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to Radio Dixie 91.3. As Colorado School Mines kicks it back off to Dixie State, Isaiah Wooden on the return in deep into the end on the one-yard line, and we'll take it back out. He'll get to the 20, to the 30, to about the 40, and he'll be pushed out of bounds at about the 50-yard line. A good starting field position for Dixie State. What a run there by Isaiah Wooden on the kickoff return coming out of the break. There is a flag on the field, and we're about to see what the call is. There are two fouls on the play, both on the return team. Holding, 43, and penalties declined. Holding, 33 of the return team. Half this is the goal. And that is going to hurt them back. It's going to pull them back. And that's going to hurt Dixie State as there was two holding calls called. 33, Tane Tualua there on the penalty. And it will back them up to about the nine-yard line. Deep into Dixie State's own territory in the own end zone here. As Mike Sanders lines up in a pistol formation. CJ Luongo line up in the back. Three receivers are to his left. Sanders fakes a hand off to CJ, looking, looking all day. Throws it deep down the field, and it is caught. What a catch by Isaiah Wooden. The kickoff returner making up for the fact he lost all those yards as there's 8.14 left to go in this football game. Sanders taking a hit late after that throw. What a great catch there by Isaiah Wooden late. He'll be down at about the 44-yard line, and that's where they'll start their next play. First down and 10. Sanders takes a hit late, and it was called incomplete. Ooh, that was a disastrous hit there by Mike Sanders as he is shaking up a little bit late after that hit. Will he stay in? We're about to see. And he got driven down into the ground. And it's funny how they've called a couple penalties on Dixie State this season for those type of plays where you drove the quarterback into the ground and threw the flags. We are not going to throw it when one of our guys are down. I wonder why. Second down and 10 coming up here. Sanders still at quarterback. Two receivers to his right and left. CJ in the backfield with him. Colorado Mines showing the blitz. Sanders gets rid of it and is caught. And he'll be down at about the 20-yard line. Dewan Dansler on the reception yet again. What a great catch there by Dewan Dansler. Again, Sanders takes a hit late, but he stays in that pocket. Dewan Dansler gained about 10 yards after the catch. And they'll may mark them out of bounds at the 25-yard line. First down and 10. 7-18 left on the clock. We have a tied ball game here between Colorado School Mines and Dixie State at 38. Sanders throws the ball to the end zone, and it is incomplete, but the flags are thrown. Xavier Smith, the intended target, was being completely covered by Miguel Rosendo, and they call it a complete, and they call it a perfect pass interference call against, against Colorado School of Mines as I'm losing, as I'm starting to lose the track here on today on the call. Be first down and 10. Looking back, Mike Sanders took a hit late on that one. As we have a first down and goal at the 10-yard line. Dixie State two for two on the day. Can they make it three for three? They had one field goal and one touchdown. Sanders motions Xavier from right to left. Dewan Dansler is the other receiver on the field. Throws it to the end zone, and it's caught by Dewan Dansler for the touchdown. Cheryl Blazers lead it again. 44 to 38 with 702 left to go with a pending PAT here. Mike Sanders, third touchdown of the day. A perfectly thrown ball there 
to the Dewan Dantzler with a little corner route in the end zone. The PAT is up and it is good. AJ Jurgensen, six for six on the day today. A perfect day to be perfect. As Colorado, excuse me, Dixie State leads this football game 45 to 38 with 701 left to go in this football game. We are going to take another timeout back here and be right back with more on Radio Dixie 91.3. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to Radio Dixie 91.3 as Dixie State kicks it back off to Colorado School Mines and Farmer on the reception. He's trying to get outside the numbers, trying to get back in the middle of the field. He'll get out to about the 44-yard line on the other side of the field. Great field position there. For Colorado School Mines, Brandon Farmer there on the kickoff return was taken at about the 12-yard line. A couple players there from Dixie State ready to tackle him and did not finish the tackle. And Farmer just got away and got more after the after the run. Was finally taken down by A.J. Jurgensen, the kicker, and a good field position there for Colorado School Mines. 6.50 left to go in this football game. Parker has two receivers to his right and left. Cameron Mayberry is in the backfield. Parker takes a snap, fakes a handoff to Mayberry, throws it to his receiver, and be pushed out of bounds immediately at the 38-yard line. Sean O'Dell on the reception there. Making second down and five. A good little flat route right there by Sean O'Dell to get the yards. Second down and five coming up. 6.30 left to go on the clock here in the fourth quarter. Dixie State leading Colorado School Mines 45-38. to Harker looking deep down the field, and it is incomplete. Was looking for Brody Oliver on that one. As will be now second down and 10. Remington Kelly was so close for that sack. Harker just got away, then stepped back in the pocket and tried to connect with Brody Oliver and could not get it. Harker has three receivers to his left, one receiver to his right. Sean O'Dell, the one on the island. Harker fakes the handoff to Mayberry and will keep it himself and try to get up the middle of the field and will get nothing there, possibly even got backed up as he was pushed out of bounds at about the 36-yard line, possibly lost, didn't lose anything, but just try to stretch out for the first down there as it is the fourth down and one. Colorado School Mines showing they're going for it. They are going for it. Did Mayberry get it? Yes, he did. And he'll walk all the way into the end zone for another touchdown. Cameron Mayberry, his third touchdown of the day. A good call by Dixie State to throw the blitz, but Colorado School Mines perfectly blocked everybody. And Mayberry just found a hole and got up the middle of the field and scored a touchdown. 45 to 44 with a pending PAT by Sean by Scott Marshall here. We the PAT is up and it is good. We have another tie in this fourth quarter here. Scott Marshall on the touchdown there. Walked all the way in. Nobody even close to touching him. We have a tie ball game yet again at 45 all between Colorado School Mines and Dixie State. We're going to take another timeout here and be right back with more on Radio Dixie 91.3 Trailblazer Network. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to Radio Dixie 91.3 here on the Trailblazer Network as Colorado School Mines kicks it back off to Dixie State. Isaiah Wooden will take the knee down in the middle of the end zone, and it will be taken back. It will be marked at the 25-yard line, and that's where Dixie State will take over here. Again, if you're just joining us, we have a gunslinging game here, and I predicted that earlier in the pregame show today. I did not think it was going to come true. We have a tie ball game between Colorado School Mines and Dixie State at 45 all here late in the fourth quarter with 5.50 left to go. First down and 10 for Dixie State. Sanders has three receivers to his right and one receiver to his left. 
Hands the ball to CJ, and he'll just get a gain of two yards on that one. Be second down and eight coming up. 66 yards is all that the running game has mustered up today, but 359 yards is what the passing game has had today. Sanders fakes the handoff again, throws it deep down the field, and it is incomplete. As will be a second, as we have a third down and eight here. As Mike Sanders was looking for Xavier Smith on that one. Could not connect with him as Sanders took a late hit there. Third down and eight coming up here for Dixie State. 5.15 left to go. Three receivers to his right for Mike Sanders. One to his left. Isaiah winning the one on the island. Sanders takes a snap. Looking. Throws it to Xavier Smith. And he almost had it, but he dropped it late. As it looks like the, the Dixie State will send out their punt team. Xavier Smith almost had it for a second there. It was broken up late by Miguel Rosendo. As Josh Carlson will come on for his third punt of the day. Fourth and eight. 5-11 to go. Carlson kicks it back off. It was taken by Riley Hoff and he'll be down at about the 36-yard line. A good punt there by Carlson to pin Carrasco Mines deep as he could. First down and 10 for Carrasco Mines. A 45 tie game here. 502 left to go here. First down and 10. Parker has two receivers to his right and two receivers to his left. Cameron Mayberry's lined up in the backfield with him. Parker takes a snap, hands the ball to Mayberry. He'll try to get to the middle of the field, and he will get a gain of about five yards on that one as it'll be second down and five coming up. Been a very tight football game today between both teams, something a lot of people around the RMAC were not expecting to see. But Dixie State giving Colorado School Mines all they got. Parker, two receivers to his right and left yet again. Mayberry lined up in the backfield. Parker hands the ball to Mayberry yet again. He'll try to get up the middle of the field and will get away and will get down to the line of scrimmage and more. That'll be about the 30, that'll be about the 44 yard line. A good run there by Mayberry, who was swallowed up at the beginning, but got away and got more of the first down there. First down and 10. Four minutes and 18 seconds left to go, and there's a player down. Not really sure who it is. It must. It looks like to be one of the linemen. As soon as I see a number, I will tell you guys. But, of course, you never like to see injuries on the field, especially when it's a lineman because they keep banging in. They, they bang each other a lot during the time of plays. Still being tended down there on the field as now they're starting to get them up. It looks to be number 64. Joey Roselle, the red shirt senior, the right guard on this team. A little shaken up after the play. Doesn't look to be anything totally serious, so that's good to hear and good to see. Hopefully, he's not totally hurt. First down and 10, 418 left to go. Harker has three receivers to his right, one receiver to his left. Mayberry lined up in the backfield yet again. Hands ball to Mayberry. He'll try to get up the middle of the field and will get a gain about four yards on that one. Mayberry again, the load of the runs in this second half after Farmer put the ball on the ground earlier. As now Farmer will check back in as the running back. Second down and six, 3.30 left to go. Parker has three receivers to his left, one receiver to his right. Hands the ball to Farmer yet again. He'll try to get out and will get nothing there as a flag will fly in late between Colorado School Mines and Dixie State. A game everybody thought Colorado School Mines was just going to walk over everybody, walk over Dixie State, and just move on to their next game. That is not the case as it is homecoming day and senior day here for Dixie State. Dixie State showing the blitz. They bring it. Does it work? Yes, it does. Third down and 10 coming up. Mayberry will just get back to the line of scrimmage as Shiloh Pritchard was the first one there. 
a huge third down and 10 coming up for this Dixie State defense. Two minutes are showing left on the clock. Parker has two receivers to his right and two receivers to his left. Mayberry is lined up on the left side. Dixie State showing the blitz. They bring it. Parker throws it to the end zone. And it is intercepted. Intercepted by Mike Jones. Will it stand? The refs are talking about it. It looked like Mike Jones was in the end zone. Let's see what the refs have to say. So the interception occurred at the one yard line. Right? The defender's momentum took him to the end zone. If I rule the ball, he says the one yard line, first down. And that is not a good one there. I don't think he was down at the one yard line. I can see why they say that. Uh, looking at the replay here. Granted by CEC TV, who I talked to earlier about trying to get a little monitor to give me some highlights here or some um, replays. Granted to them, thank you for that. It looked like his foot was down on about the six. But it looked like he was down between the one yard line and the goal line. So they will mark it there, but I would have marked it down because he was in the end zone. So it'll be 148 left to go in this football game. Dixie State at their own one yard line. Mike Sanders has two receivers to his right and one to his left. Sanders takes a snap, throws it quick out to Dewan Dantzler, and he'll have it at about the nine-yard line. They'll be quick back to the line because it is a running clock here with 130 left to go. A great catch there by Dewan Dantzler with one-handed as that is his 12th catch of the day. Sanders hurries up as whistles are blown. Looks to be a false start against Dixie State, and they'll back him up yet again. They'll back them up at the four-yard line as they were at the nine. That is not where they want to go in this tied ball game at 45 all. 127 left to go, second down and six. Sanders has two receivers to his right and left. Sage is still in the backfield with him. Sanders throws it deep down the field, and it is caught. It was caught by Xavier Smith. Only Xavier Smith could have got that one as he was down at about the 40-yard line. A great pass there. By Mike Sanders fitted between a window so tight it was ridiculous. 116 left to go here. Sanders throws it deep downfield again. And it is caught. It was caught by Isaiah Wooden. And the flags fly out. Dixie State in a good position here with 109 left to go as the rest will gather up on the flag. Sanders yet again using his arm for back to back 40 plus yard throws. It looks to be a pass interference call, and that will give Dixie State even more yards. No, they're going to wave it off. It'll be first down and 10 at the 20-yard line. Sanders takes a snap, throws it to the end zone yet again, and flags will fly yet again. As I'm trying to catch up here, Isaiah Wooden yet again the intended target. Pass interference was called against Colorado School Mines. 57 seconds left to go here, sports fans. A definite call against Colorado School Mines. The one that's guilty is Mac, is Ma- Mason Pierce, the freshman. Definitely held on, and the ball we placed at the five-yard line. 57 seconds left to go in this exciting football game between Dixie State and Colorado School Mines. Sanders has CJ and Lawrence in the backfield. And Sanders will give it off to Sage. He'll get about two yards on that one as he'll be down at the three as a timeout was called. Down at the three-yard line here. 49 seconds left to go. We are all getting excited and jittery. And I'm yawning at the same time. Second down and goal at the three-yard line with 52 seconds left to go. This is definitely coming down to the wire. We will see what happens here as both teams come back onto the field. Remember, Colorado School Mines came into this game undefeated. First in overall RMAC play looking forward. Their outright regular season championship of the RMAC. Dixie State has other plans for today as they came in fourth in the RMAC at 5-4 and four overall with a 5-3 and three record. Can Dixie State finally punch it into the end zone with 52 seconds left to go? Sanders is back in at quarterback. Motions over to Juan Danzler. Sanders takes a snap. Hands the ball to Sage. He'll get up the field. We'll get to about the two-yard line there as another possibly a timeout will be called. Third down and two coming up. 
Sage I find for every yard he could. Third down and goal. 45 seconds left to go in a tie football game. 45 all, and I got to say this is probably the coolest moment of the season so far here at home. Can Dixie State pull off the upset here? What will Dixie State call? Third down and goal. If you get the touchdown, you lead this game by seven. If you had to put it in the hands of A.J. Jurgensen, you would only lead this game by three and would possibly give it back to Colorado Mines with at least 30 seconds left to go. They send out the Wildcat. Connor Miller, C.J. Luongo, and Lawrence Starks are, in at, are at the position. Connor Miller going to the end zone. He'll be met at the one-yard line. Will there be another timeout called? They've stopped the clock for a moment here. Was there another timeout called? As Connor Merrill was in a wildcat, faked the handoff to Lawrence Starks and did just got a yard short. Did not get it all. As there's 40.4 seconds left. I wouldn't I would be lying if I didn't say I had butters butterflies in my stomach right now. This is exciting here. The game on the line. One yard to go to take the lead over Carl Rosco Mines in a tied ball game at 45 all. Fourth down and goal on the one yard line. Dixie State has been perfect. Three for three today in the red zone. Can they make it four for four? No, they will send out the field goal unit. It'll be down to A.J. Jurgensen to give them the lead. It'll be a 19 yard field goal. He is one for one on the day and six for six in PATs. The kick is up. It is no good. He missed it left. 36 seconds left to go in this football game. That is gut-wrenching. Dixie State's defense has to come out with a stop to force overtime here. 36 seconds left to go at the 20-yard line. Colorado School Mines has a chance to win this football game right here. Harker has two receivers to his right and left. Mayberry is in the backfield. Will Mines play for overtime or will they go for the win? Mayberry steps in and is intercepted late. It was intercepted. Intercepted. Abraham Reinhardt. Dixie State has yet another chance. 29.7 seconds left to go. Abraham Reinhardt intercepted Eric Harker for the fifth time this season. That is only his fifth interception of the season. Reinhardt had read it beautifully. Intercepted off a tip. Reinhardt tried to go all the way in the end zone to save us from a f- another field goal miss, possibly. Can Dixie State capitalize? Mike Sanders has three receivers on the line. One tight end. CJ in the backfield. 29.7 seconds left to go. No more timeouts. Sanders, snap, throws it to the end zone. And it is caught. Touchdown. Dixie State takes the lead. Xavier Smith with the touchdown to take the lead. Dixie State leads by six. Mike Sanders with the game-winning touchdown throw to Xavier Smith. 24.4 seconds left to go. The kick is up. The PAT is good. 24.4 seconds left to go, and I'm losing my mind in the booth. Oh, my God. We got to take a timeout here. We'll be right back with more on Radio Dixie 91.3, the Trailblazer Network. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken It is starting to get loud here at Dixie State Trailblazer Stadium. Dixie State leading this football game 52 to 45, 24.4 seconds left on the clock here. AJ Jurgensen sends it deep down the field. Farmer will take it down at the nine. It'll just fair catch it. Try to give Colorado School Mines as much field as they can. What an amazing football game, ladies and gentlemen. As this is starting to get down to the wire here. If you are just joining us, what a game you have missed. Hopefully these last 24 seconds are exciting for you guys. Dixie State is leading the sixth ranked team in the country in Division II play. 52 to 45 in a gunslinging game today. Mike Sanders with a career high. Six touchdowns through the air. Harker takes a snap, throws it deep down the field, and is caught by his receiver. He'll be down at about the 44-yard line, and that will calm the crowd down. 17.6 seconds left to go. Farmer gets him back to the line. Empty backfield. Throws it quick to his receiver, and he'll be down at about the 41-yard line. We're trying to get him back to the line. 
Five seconds left to go. Can they get a snap off quick? Two seconds. Snap is off. No time is left on the clock, but a flag flies. What is this call? As there an injured player down on the field, Riley Hoff is completely shaken up and is really hurt. The game is over. Dixie State pulls off the upset in amazing fashion. Dixie State beats the sixth ranked team in the country in Division II play. 52 to 45. They now go six and four on the year. Colorado School Mines will drop to 91 and 81 overall. What an amazing football game. I hope all you fans had a great time listening to it. I had a blast reading this game, making sure this game got called. It was awesome. Dixie State, I'll repeat, wins this football game. 52 to 45 on homecoming day, on senior day. That's how you send 18 seniors out with a win in front of the home crowd. And this, my friends, is also a record-breaking thing. Dixie State will finish at home undefeated for the first time in Division II play. Not only do we not only do we have a four-game winning streak earlier in the season, that was a Division II record for us. We will finish the year undefeated at home. We have one more game next week against Adams State, but I'll get more to that in the post-game show. Dixie State again pulls off the upset against Colorado School of Mines, sixth ranked in the country, Division II play, sends them to 91 on the year, 81 overall. What an amazing football game. I just had to breathe there like there. Oh, unbelievable. An amazing football game here. Definitely there will be a party tonight for all the fun and glory, but awesome, awesome, awesome win for Dixie State and a great way to end the home season end the season at home undefeated winning in front of the home crowd on homecoming day on senior day to send the 18 seniors out with a win like that you can't get any better than that people you cannot get any better than that in a fashion in a crazy win over colorado school mines a team that came in scoring 50 points per game not allowing their opponents get back in the second half their last win, they almost won by 42 points over South Dakota Mines. This was amazing to call. Oh, my God. We will be right back after this break. We're going to send it for a commercial. We'll be right back with a post-game show here on Radio Dixie 91.3, the Trailblazer Network. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the post-game halftime show here at Trailblazer Stadium. For the end of this great football game, if you missed it, what an amazing football game. For you guys that enjoyed it all day, thank you for tuning in. Again, Dixie State pulls off the upset of the of the year against the sixth-ranked team in Division two play over Colorado School Mines, 52 to 45. It sends Colorado School Mines to 9 and 1 on the year, 8 and 1 in overall play. Dixie State goes to 6 and 4 and 6 and 3 in RMAC play. Shadron, uh, we'll get into what happened with Shadron State and South Dakota Mines. What an amazing football game. I just got to say that I am still stoked. I am still happy. Obviously, riding with a lot of emotions. If Sean was in the studio with me right now, I'd be like, listen, ride the wave of emotions. Slow down and calm down. Catch your breath, which I'm going to do here just in a minute. But an amazing football game by Colorado School of Mines and Dixie State. Again, Dixie State getting the win here. Let's look at some stats coming from this game. What an amazing game this was. Colorado School of Mines had 28 first downs. They ran the ball 41 times for 299 yards. They averaged 7.3 yards a carry. Dixie State had 25 first downs for 25 rush attempts for 139 yards on the ground. We'll get into the individual stats between both Lawrence and CJ. They ran, they got 5.6 yards a carry in the passing game, which is where everything was amazing. 31 catches by this Dixie State team for 553 yards for 17.8 a catch. 
Colorado School minus at 26 catches, 327 yards for 12.6 yards, and 300. Again, I'll, I'll emphasize 327 yards. They had 12.6 yards a catch. Plays were just about even in total yards. 73 plays by Dixie State for 692 yards. By Colorado School Mines was 84 yards for 662 yards. Dixie State averaged 9.48 yards a play, while Colorado School Mines averaged 7.45 yards. And the best thing in this football game, the penalties were the penalties went were, were evenly, but Dixie State did not get caught in that today. Obviously, again, a great, great game by Dixie State today. They were 7 of 15 on third downs as long as as well as Colorado School Mines was 7 of 15. Two for three on fourth down conversions for Colorado School Mines and one for two for Dixie State. Let's get into some individual stats here. We'll start with Colorado School Mines first. Isaiah Harker, their quarterback, was 26 of 43, three touchdowns, two interceptions for 327 yards. He was sacked three times in this game. Riley Hoff his leading receiver of the day has seven receptions, 106 yards, and two touchdowns. Cameron Mayberry, their truck of the day, had 28 rushes, 233 yards, and two touchdowns on the ground. Dixie State, the offensive numbers. Mike Sanders had himself a career day, 31 of 45, 553 yards. That ties his that ties his career high for the season. And five touchdowns. That is his career high of the of the season today. Dewan Dancer had 12 catches, 251 yards, and three touchdowns. Xavier Smith with four receptions and 88 yards for one touchdown. And Isaiah Wynn also had four receptions for 116 yards and one touchdown. Both Isaiah and Xavier had the last two touchdowns in the game to help out Dixie State to get the dramatic win here. C.J. Luongo, obviously an amazing running back for both guys. He had six, he had 14 rushes for 69 yards for for no touchdowns, which is which I wish he had a touchdown today. Lawrence Starks ran the ball just four times for nine yards today and had one touchdown on the ground. But a surprising number is that Mike Sanders ran the ball for three times for 66 yards. What an amazing I, – I, I can't get over it. It's an amazing football game. This is the best game of the season for Dixie State. Obviously, a talk about if when we have the ceremonies later this season for awards out for the football team, an amazing football game by Dixie State and Colorado School Mines. Colorado School Mines loses. Dixie State pulls off the upset. Now, let's jump into a couple uh, highlights – I mean, excuse me, Let's jump into little scores from around the RMAC today. Shadron State gets their seventh win of the season. They win their football game in a dramatic fashion as well. They beat South Dakota Mines 50 to 46. It pushes Shadron State to 7 and 2 on the year. What a great game that was as I was trying to follow that as much as I could while giving you guys your guys game. Colorado State Pueblo in complete fashion as always. They beat up Black Hill State. 59 to nothing. Colorado State Plaza was still second. Is now tied <coughs> as I'm losing my as I'm losing my voice. Colorado School Mines and Colorado State Plaza are now tied for the Armand Conference regular season championship. Obviously, the game will still be in Golden, Colorado at Colorado School Mines because Colorado Mines beat Plaza earlier in the year, but a, a good. A good butt whooping by Colorado School Mines. Excuse me, Colorado State Plaza to Black Hill State. And I try to get the other score from Western State and um. Oh, I got it here. Well, yeah, I see here. New Mexico Highlands beat Western Colorado as I was looking for it. Beat them twenty to sixteen. Western State that's their eighth loss of the season. They're two and eight on the year. New Mexico Highlands they go to four and six on the year. I I tell you. The best game of the season, the best game of the year, an amazing win. Again, Dixie State made history all season long today, but they beat, <laughs> they beat, um, we had a four-game winning streak this season. That was the longest in Dixie State history. Dixie State finishes out the home crowd season this year in front of the homecoming game in 
home in senior day, sending the seniors out on a great win. They finished the year four and zero at at home this season. Just a excuse me, five and zero at home. Excuse me, I forgot about the other game. Yes, Western five and zero at home. That has not happened in Dixie State Division Two era or in history. That is the first time it's happened. Oh my God, it's just great to have all these feelings and all these emotions. But I got to calm down just a little bit. I have to be professional and you know have to represent Radio Dixie in a very matter of fashion. So I know Sean's going to be talking to me about it after the game because I know he's going ballistic in his office. Um, yeah, great game by Dixie State. Again, I have to give it to the 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 the. There, there's a lot of awards that can go out for player of the game. There's not a player of the game. There's a team of the game, and Dixie State was that team of the day. Everybody gets the player of the game. They should change it to the team of the day. Mike Sanders having 553 yards, five touchdowns. Xavier Smith with a game-winning touchdown late. Dewan Dancer had 12 catches for 256 yards for three touchdowns. Abraham Reinhardt with the interception late to end the game. Um, Mike Jones with the interception at the end towards that where which led to the Dixie State touchdown to take the lead of the game. There was it, it, it was a complete team game today, a perfect team game today, an amazing game. I, I, I can't stop saying that. It, it was an amazing football game to call this one. I can't wait until next week. I hope it's just as, as a I hope it's just as, as exciting. Um, speaking of that. It will be next week here on Radio Dixie 91.3 at 1 o'clock. Adam State, Dixie State. Dixie State is on the road for their final game of the season. They will try to finish the season 7-4. and four. Colorado School of Mines looking at their schedule, I believe. Uh, their final game of the season is against Shadron State. That game will be on ESPN3. That's going to be a good one there. That game is going to have a lot of... A, a lot of things on the line looking at that as now I see it. Shadron State, if they win that game, they could possibly get into the RMAC championship. That would be crazy. Um, then Colorado State Pueblo is, uh, is automatically in, I believe. They already locked that position in. But Colorado School Mines can go from being the number one team in the RMAC to number three and have Colorado State Pueblo and Shadron State play for the RMAC championship. That game is going to be ridiculously good. That's going to be a lot on the line for that one. But, again, if you're just joining us, Dixie State won over Colorado School Mines today, 52-45. to Again, they finished out the season at home undefeated for the first time in Dixie State history. They have now are They are now trying to win another one to have another winning season. This would be the first time. In, I believe, 20 years, they'd have winning back-to-back seasons in their in, in Dixie State history. That would be an amazing thing to do. We are going to all look forward to that. I will be on the call that next week. Hopefully, I got a partner. I didn't have anybody today with me today. I was on the long call today. I, I still can't get over it, but a great game today by Dixie State. Again, there's not a player of the game. It was a team game today, an awesome Awesome, awesome win. And now I'm going to send out, and I got to get back to the studio and, and get ready to do some other things. But thank you for tuning in today. I hope you guys had a great game, had a lot of fun as much as I did calling this football game. Again, Dixie State beat Colorado School of Mines 52 to 45, and that is their sixth win of the season. I send you all today. Have a good day. You've been listening to Dixie State Athletics on Radio Dixie 91.3, brought to you by Ken Garf St. George Ford Lincoln. For more information on Dixie State Athletics, DixieStateAthletics.com. Thanks for listening to Radio Dixie 91.3.